Hello and welcome in to the NFL Roundup Podcast. Uh, I'm Shane Stanley, joined by John Hepso. And, Hello. And we're back. So uh, nothing's really happened since we were last on, huh? No, it's been pretty bleak. Pretty, pretty, pretty quiet. So. Probably, probably the most quiet offseason ever. Yeah. Unreal offseason. Madness, right? So it's been uh, pretty busy. But uh, before we get into all the stuff that happened, we just wanted to touch on a bit of brief news today that uh, came, and that is the NFL overtime rule. Now, this is mostly going to be playoffs, I think, from what we've heard so far. It's, it's only playoffs, yeah. Yeah, so the regular season rules are just going to be the same as they are now, I guess. Yeah. And if we get a Kansas City-Buffalo scenario in the playoffs, then mm. it could be shoot out. <laughs> damn. So, yeah, we had this situation come up a couple times the last few years with the Chiefs and the Patriots. Yeah. AFC Championship 2018, I want to say? Yes. 2018, yes. and then last year, Buffalo and Kansas City. So, Kansas City got, well, they tied the game up with 13 seconds left, kicked a field goal, and went to OT. They won the coin flip, and of course, they scored a touchdown, Travis Kelsey, back right corner to Enzo. Mm-hmm. And Buffalo never had a shot. Buffalo, to me, had the game, but uh, they just never got a shot. Had to walk home. Yeah, I seen a stat yesterday that said of the last twelve games, I think seven of them, uh, the team who got the toss won it right off the hop. So it's not every team that's getting it is winning, but it's enough that uh, I mean, you know, you think of how many close playoff games, and I mean, you, you don't really want a playoff game to end that way, I guess. I mean, yeah. I, I we were just talking before we got on here about how bad it was, like when you can get a field goal. So like you would get <laughs> you would get the ball. You would get like three first downs. You get you get a sick <laughs> kickoff return. And then and then yeah, like you could win it right there. <laughs> right like there, yeah. so yeah, it was a very wild rule back in the day. So even like like the touchdown to to win rather than a field goal was a, was a really positive change. So like this is put more emphasis on, on defense. To it. And I mean like the NFL today is really going towards like offense heavy. So I mean this kind of plays to that strength a little bit too. And and I mean who who wanted that game to end back in January? So. Uh, so definitely a good rule. Basically, the rule is that if I kick the ball off to Shane's team, and Shane scores a touchdown, like Kansas City scored a touchdown on Buffalo, mm-hmm. I would get a chance to drive down the field and get a touchdown as well. Mm-hmm. In the case that you score a touchdown and I score a touchdown, then it goes to the same rule. Any points win the game. So we we discussed too because like teams have discussed the two point rule. And instead of kicking the extra point in overtime, which obviously is like a 98, 99% uh, to go for the two point. But like, would you, would you consider going for the two point anyways? I I know it's a less percentage, but it certainly may, like if you're, if you're confident in your offense, do you do it anyways? Like I know, like I heard yesterday too, when they were talking about like Buffalo is a run, like power running team, like running it in from the two, probably not that hard. They're like, that's a big reason why they want to do the two point rule because they're like yeah. that could play advantage to us yeah. specifically so certain teams that have an offense that's kind of built for like a two point play yeah, it could really help them Goal so line offense. I know it's not a rule yet per se and it's probably a matter of time until that is a thing or, or like I said it did get shut down this time so maybe, maybe perhaps not but as of uh, as of now, it's definitely something to think about because I mean, if you got two offenses like that, that's just going to keep scoring touchdown, touchdown. Like we all imagine, Casey and Buffalo could have kept yes. that going all they night. They went all night. They could have kept going, right? So, at, at what point? Like, I mean, that's eventually going to be a thing too. Like every like no none of these rules change until something happens that it's just like okay, this has to change. Yeah. So you're we're it's going to happen. One of these games is just going to go and go and go and go and go, and it's going to be the topic on on Monday where it's like. Why, like, there has to be a rule to stop this. So I think the two-point rule is probably going to come into effect at some point anyway, so it's probably not going to happen until that kind of scenario happens. But definitely something to think about, like, if you're one of those teams, like a Kansas City or Buffalo, really, both of them. Chargers would definitely go for two. Chargers would definitely go for two. (laughs) (laughs) They don't even know the rule exists. They'll just go for two every time anyways. (laughs) All right, so on to the next topic here. We're just going to do a free agency recap. And it's not strictly free agency. It's any trades that have happened up to this point, any releasing of players or or any signings from free agency. So we're going to go division by division. Yeah. Shane's going to uh, take the South and the North divisions in both the NFC and AFC. 
And I'm going to take the East and West divisions in the AFC and NFC. Yeah, we figured this was the best way to avoid some chaos. Or It's kind of hard at this point now, after two weeks, to go in chronological order even, mm. that everything happened. So, uh, yes, I know we're missing some major news topics uh, off the start here that uh, we will get into. They, uh, they will be there. Yeah. Don't, don't you worry. Because it's uh, <laughs> like I was doing the notes for Pittsburgh, for example, and... Uh, I almost forgot that Ben Roethlisberger retired that day. That feels yeah. like it was six years ago now. <laughs> yeah. Like that, that seemed, was probably the first thing that, that happened seems, at the end of the season. I don't even think they were out of the stadium of the playoff game against <laughs> no, Kansas City, no. and he was gone. So, yeah, yeah they it just was, pulled up with a wheelchair for him. He just hopped in, <laughs> just, and left. A, just a hearse. <laughs> <laughs> so we just—it's uh, just stuff that I like happened so long ago that completely like I'm just so used to. Okay, Pittsburgh don't have a quarterback, but why don't they have a yeah, quarterback? Exactly. That's why. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely get into everything that happened, uh, but we'll go division by division and uh, try to make it a little more organized. So uh, so Shane's going to start with the AFC South here, Shane. We'll start with the AFC South. So uh, we'll start with Houston. I mean, obviously one of the bigger moves the offseason now, uh, Deshaun Watson was traded. <laughs> And this was one of the more recent moves uh, because we didn't know what was happening. We don't know where he was going, what teams would want him, what his legal situation is currently. It's it's still messy. It looks better than what it did, you know, five, six months ago. But it definitely is still messy. Could there be a suspension? So he goes for three first-round picks the next three years, 22, 23, 24, 23 third, and a 22 and 24 fourth. So he got a haul, and uh, there's a trade. That's a Tyreek haul right there. Yeah, there's a trade. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, so the additions that they really made, they resigned a defensive tackle, uh, Malik Collins, to a two-year deal. Um, and their departures were David Johnson, Amendola, and they lost their safety, Justin Reed, to Kansas City. So not a whole lot of movement there. We're thinking if you were to rank the AFC teams at the moment, they would probably be 16. Mm. So um, yeah. they're definitely in rebuild mode. I guess they're going to go with Davis Mills at quarterback, and we'll see what happens there. So that was mostly it for them. Uh, so moving on to the Colts, they had an interesting offseason. Uh, it was slow at first. Yeah, very it was slow. It was very slow. For a team that was right there um, fighting to get into the playoffs last year, kind of expected a few other moves for them. But uh, they did get going when they got going. And it, I think they got better looking at uh, everything on paper. But uh, I think they took a step forward. For sure. So starting with the quarterback situation, which was obviously the biggest move they made, they traded Carson Wentz to Washington, and they swapped uh, – a third round pick for Matt Ryan, um, which is so funny when you think about Matt Ryan going for a third round pick when you see all these picks mm. running around. And it got me thinking, and and not too long ago, New England threw a second round pick for Mohamed Sanu. Yeah. So when you look Gross. at when you look at that, a second round pick for a receiver that didn't do anything <coughs> has bounced around a couple teams. Now I don't even know where he is currently, or if he's yeah. still in the league. Period. And Matt Ryan goes for a third. So no. yeah, I think Indianapolis was like. We're not giving you anything other than a third pick. Mm-hmm. That's as much. That's as high as we can go. And Atlanta was just like, "Look, Matt Bryan, you've been loyal to us. We had some great seasons here. You won an MVP. Just go on, man. Further your career. See you later." I don't know. If they, I don't know if they felt he had little leverage or what, because it's like Baker Mayfield uh, going back to Houston when they traded Deshaun to Cleveland. His first. Uh, instinct was that he wanted to get traded to Indianapolis shortly thereafter Matt Ryan gets traded so I don't know if Indianapolis considered Baker it seems like they didn't I don't know if this was already in the works Mm -hmm. and because this seems like it happened really fast like you know we've talked the past couple years amongst ourselves that Matt Ryan definitely could be moved and Atlanta was going to pull the trigger eventually but now the timing seems a little strange. Um, they also seem like they're getting into re- rebuild mode as we're looking at Definitely. their off season. So um, I don't know, but it's a good move for Indianapolis for sure. Um, they re-signed uh, their tight end Mo Alley Cox to uh, give Matt Ryan a weapon there, and they acquired uh, Yannick Ngakwe, which was um, a part of the Saxonville defense a few years ago for a cornerback name. Rock Yasin. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, interesting name. But, uh, yeah, they did lose a couple pieces. Now, uh, the thing with the free agency list is obviously free agency is not over. Yes. So, while there are what we're calling departures uh, at the moment, they could certainly re-sign back some of these people. Uh, if they have signed to a new team, uh, 
I'll try to mention it as much as I can. But uh, so far, uh, they have a running back. Marilyn Mack uh, is gone. Uh, T.Y. Hilton, um, receiver that's been there for quite a few years. He useless last year. year he, he is on sign. So, like I said, with them not having a ton of receivers. And they lost Zach Pascal too. At the it? moment, yeah, Pascal. And then a tight end, Jack Doyle, uh, retired. So, that probably went into Mo Alley Cox coming back. Um, and then on the defensive side, uh, some key pieces. They lost Xavier Rhodes, the corner, and uh, safety Andrew Sandejo. So uh, maybe some moves coming. Um, there is still a lot of safeties and a couple lower level corners, but it's a high uh, draft year for corners as well. So I expect them to do something there. Right. Uh, so a team that made a splash uh, this year was the Jaguars. Um, they made uh, they threw a lot of money around this year. Um, they they had the room there. And they used it. So one of the more surprising signings on day one uh, was wide receiver Christian Kirk, four years, seventy-two million. So this is pretty mind blowing in terms of what he's done. Now he's certainly has room to go if you look at it from a projection standpoint. I mean, he's had seven, eight hundred yards, mm-hmm. or you know, trending upwards as a number three. So, so if you want to trend him as okay, if we put him as a number one with with a with a growing quarterback, can he can he get to a thousand yards? Perhaps. Um, I do like a few of the other smaller moves they made on offense. They uh, signed receiver Zay Jones from uh, the Raiders, uh, the guy we thought was the punter running around mm-hmm. last year. Yeah, uh, three seven. three year, twenty four million, really in that number three wide receiver pocket in terms of pay. Uh, I like that contract for them. Uh, they signed uh, Evan Ingram, a tight end, to a one year deal, and then they boost their offensive line with the franchise tag on Cam Robinson. And they signed one of the top five free agents that were on a lot of top 100 boards, uh, Garrett Brandon Scherf. Uh, I believe he's coming from Washington. I believe he was there for a long time. Uh, I believe he was on Washington's franchise tag last year, so they wanted to keep him. Uh, I guess he played well again at their price range, so they signed him. Uh, they signed a linebacker, Foy Alukun, which is coming from Atlanta League Leader in tackles last year. Yeah. Uh, on, yeah, our, pre- really on, our, on our preview, yeah, you you really, really liked him. Uh, so I saw that name stuck out on defense. I know I can't name a lot of players on their defense, to be honest. So probably a good piece for them. And uh, cornerback Darius Williams, um, three-year, $30 million, pretty Pretty good pay there, too, for yeah. starting corner. Yeah. Uh, as for departures, they lost wide receiver DJ Chark, uh, linebacker Miles Jack, and running back Carlos Hyde, which they pretty much replaced all three positions. So mm-hmm. pretty good offseason for, for them overall. Uh, and rounding out south uh, in AFC, the Titans. Um, we'll look at additions first. Uh, they traded for wide receiver Robert Woods in a trade with the Rams, which which was a very surprising move. I was absolutely shocked. Six-round pick was all it took to get him. Um, very, very surprising that's all it took. He's um, a run-blocking wide receiver. Yeah, now which he, will fit great with he, the is, he is coming off the injury, of course. Uh, torn ACL, I believe it was mid-season because that's what drew the Odell yep. trade. Week eight, nine, so three. yeah, we're looking at around November sometime. So he should be on track to play at the start of the season, but we shall see how that goes. Uh, they signed tight end Austin Hooper one year deal. Uh, their biggest signing was their linebacker Harold Landry, five year, eighty seven point five million. Uh, so that's a pretty big contract for him. Uh, resigned their cornerback Buster Screen and uh, gave their kicker Randy Bullock a two year deal. So, looking at their departures, uh, it was a linebacker, Rashawn Evans, uh, tight end, Anthony Ferkser, and they released wide receiver Julio Jones. Yeah. So, he is one of the free agents we discussed that's still out there. Could be re-signed by uh, Tennessee still. I doubt it because they cut him uh, straight up. So, I'm assuming he will go elsewhere. Um, but if his interest is really low, maybe they just wanted him at a cheaper price tag because they did trade for him to his current contract, which I'm sure was yeah. high. So I won't rule out that he won't go back there, but I say it's pretty unlikely. Yeah. So that was it for the AFC South. So uh, I guess, uh, John, you could take uh, the AFC East, I guess, would be your first. Yeah. So we'll start with the Buffalo Bills, who I thought had, you know, it wasn't a super busy offseason for them, but they did have a couple big... Big acquisitions here. Yeah. So starting with Von Miller, four year, hundred and six. No, five or I think six years. Six year, yeah. Six year, one hundred and sixty million dollar. Now I don't expect them to see the see the whole contract out. No, me neither. Um, I think you know you really start looking like after three or four years. 
it's better for them to get off it because that's of well, course when the they, in my opinion, they shafted themselves long term with the cap because mm-hmm. you know that's the cap is going to be there and unless that, he's traded and some other team is willing to take on the contract, right? Which may be one of the low middling teams, mm-hmm. or he might just retire. I don't know, but um, yeah, that was a great move by them. Sure up their pass rush a little bit. They got, got tight end OJ Howard, Howard who I'm really, really high. I, I I think he's an athletic. Big tight end, going to be a great weapon for uh, for Josh Allen line up with Dawson Knox. If you got the two tight ends set, you can run the ball like crazy. He's a good blocking tight end. Uh, Jameson Crowder, he was good with the Jets last year. I liked him. In, I liked him. Uh, in his last well seven seasons, he's averaged fifty catches a year, six hundred fifty yards a year. So yeah, it's not terrible. Good he, for number three. He he like it's what they call a low floor. He he's consistent mm-hmm. or high floor. Sorry, uh, like he's not gonna blow doors off off of defenses, but he's always consistent. He'll yeah. make catches. Stays he's healthy. Young, stays healthy. Yeah. yeah, fairly young. He's twenty nine so. or yeah. so. And uh, defensive end Jordan Phillips, he had nine and a half sacks with Buffalo two years ago. So that that. That's some great numbers. He had a terrible season last year, though. Yes. Uh, yeah, I think he had one sack. But if he can kind of rejuvenate himself sitting next to Von Miller on that line, well, you know, it'll be a good pickup. Uh, defensive end Shaq Lawson. He was also with the Bills. And he had six and a half sacks two years ago. And, you know, he's a good rotational pass rusher. Yeah. He's not... He's not going to sit up there and be all game. Every he probably season. won't start, but like no. you, you definitely want to rotate like your front four. You you want to be six to seven pass yeah. rushers you can kind of Absolutely. move around, right? And running back Duke Johnson, he's a good pass catching back. Five straight seasons, four hundred yards. So he's a good addition. Um, notable losses. There wasn't a hell of a lot here for Buffalo. No. Uh, wide receiver Cole Beasley and wide receiver Emmanuel Sanders. They. Filled the role last year. They they were pretty good. Well, like, I, I'm the not Julian Edelman type guys, right? I'm not high on Sanders currently because I feel like he's kind of bounced around on those one year deals for the past few years. Uh, on a team, usually usually a contender at this point, you know, veteran minimum, show up, you know, get your whatever 20, 30 catches if that. Yeah. And you know, just a plug and play piece in the playoffs if uh, if needed. But I just think make a few big plays. I think Jameson Crowder definitely. I think he takes, o- both. takes over for Beasley, and then, like I said, I, I'm not too high on Sanders. Throw a fourth round draft pick or something on, on a receiver, I'm sure will take up his role. You're good to go. Yeah, so I think they really addressed uh, most of the offensive losses. So, uh, yeah, I definitely I, I like what they've done. So, to my least favorite uh, off season team so far, but they're my favorite team of all time. So, <laughs> I'm very torn here with this one uh, the New England Patriots. They've been very quiet. You it's just been inactivity, really. I haven't heard much. They brought back Super Bowl clinching uh, uh, cornerback Malcolm Butler. I mean, he's bounced around everywhere. I can't get off on that. He's really the Super Bowl goat, right? Because like he he was he was he was the goat in making that play in Super Bowl forty nine. And then he was the bad goat, scapegoat <laughs> oh. in Super Bowl fifty two when when they when he was benched. Uh, Assumingly, it was Belichick's call. I mean, who else? He led, who the, else could he led the entire league in plays, in snaps, I should say. You know, and they, then you get to the Super Bowl and you sit them out. They give up however many points it was again. I can't remember 30, 30 something. something. And like that. you know, Nick Foles didn't punt one single time. You'd like to think your best defensive corner would help, but like didn't say, make any sense. But it's it's an interesting move, and you would think that there would be some serious beef there, and, and obviously he's willing to come back now. He sat out a year. Obviously, teams aren't kicking down his door to get him to play. Yeah. So maybe it was just lack of interest. He wanted to play. Bill is the one who came knocking. Bill likes to do this. You know, we talked about Get him cheap. Hightower coming back. Jamie Collins coming back a couple times, a couple stints. He really likes those older guys that he can depend on to come back and know the system. Uh, know what they're doing, so uh, not not a shocking move by any means. But uh, he's probably their number one corner right now, which is crazy to even so sad. think about. Uh, someone who didn't even play last year is now your number one corner. Like I said, it's a heavy draft class, so uh, not going to jump to ship yet. But as of right now, not not much. And they added Ty Montgomery. <laughs> they really had that one year in Green Bay where he went off and did everything, legend, and yeah. then that was it. Yeah. He's been in Chicago the last couple of years, hasn't he? 
Um, he was with the Saints last year. Okay, yeah, yeah, right. So, so I, I don't see him having a major play, <clears throat> a major role. He's listed as a receiver, but he's played running back too. He's kind, yep. he's kind of the quarter Cordell Al Patterson, Patterson kind of guy, he's like a poor man's, yes. <laughs> obviously, uh, of him. But yeah, you can definitely do it all. Uh, you might do some kick returns now that yeah. Oshevsky's gone. It's uh, p- p- potential with that. So they traded with Cleveland Browns. They traded Chase Winovich. Uh, defensive lineman for linebacker Mac Wilson, who I don't even think was a starter on Cleveland. I think it's kind of an irrelevant trade, but I figured this I'd trade anyway. is draft bus for draft bus. Here, I'll take my yeah. trash and your trash, and let's we'll see if a new scenery will help you. A new scenery will help you. It's yeah, that's right. really all it is. Uh, draft bus for draft bus. They were they were heavy in re-signing people this off season though. Mm-hmm. Uh, tackle Trent Brown, James White, Matthew Slater, special team legend. Uh, Juwan Bentley, linebacker, he, he played pretty well this season. Yeah. Uh, and he brought back Devin McCourty, which I was pretty happy about. And Nick Falk, the immortal Nick Falk. Will big, he ever retire? Big kick Nick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah I usually mean, say something else. My, 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 <laughs> my one issue is is the age of a lot of these guys. Like, like really, the one that stands out, or two, really, is, is Brown and Bentley, just because they do have, uh, they're below 30. Uh, there's really no other way to say. It. Every, every other guy is in their 30s. Um, we said on our preview, I don't expect McCourty back. I of the two, I expected Bolden over James White. Uh, I did expect uh, Trent Brown back, so I'm I'm happy to see that their line is um, well. It was a strength. It was a strength. We'll, we'll get to who they traded, but um, you know that they, they certainly had to re-sign him because yes. the Shaq Mason move was before he was re-signed. So he was a very important piece to get back after that. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, you know, I like Brown. I like Bentley. He's like, I'm not blown away by Bentley, but he's young. So, I mean, there's room. He's there's a solid room. piece. He's a solid piece. You know? Absolutely. Like he'll, if you got nobody else and you got him while well, you're in better shape. He should certainly be teams. in their top three linebacking core to rotate in and out and certainly be a big piece of the defense. Yeah. So talking about defense, notable losses. Corner, JC Jackson. I was expecting a franchise tag here. And of course they didn't. They let him go, and the Chargers swooped in and got him. Yeah. So that's a loss right there. And they got three linebackers now up in the air. They're on free agency. We can't really say their losses like Shane mentioned earlier, but uh, linebacker Kyle Van Noy, Jamie Collins, and Dante Hightower. That is a core from the last eight years of uh, Patriots football. Like I said, you look at the 2016 Patriots, you're like, shit, these are these are your guys. Yes. <laughs> these, these three, right? And here they are on the way out. And while well, they picked up Chase Winovich, like we just mentioned, trash for trash. But the one that shocked me was Sha- Shaq Mason going to the Buccaneers for a fourth round pick, wasn't it? Fifth. Fifth. Fifth, yeah. God damn it. And I mean, I, Tampa, it's a late fifth, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. so. Uh, Pretty much a sixth. Yeah, very, very shocking move. This is a classic bill, year early and year late, uh, if anything. Uh, I still expect, I mean, Shaq Mason's like 26, 27. I fully. He's got two years left on his term. This is not like it's a rental for Tampa. They got him for two years on a good money contract, yep. too. Like, he's not breaking the bank uh, for two more years. Uh, fantastic move for Tampa Bay when you Great. look at their side of it. Because they lost a couple guys on their offensive line. Yeah, and that was uh-huh. that was a, definitely a point of interest for them. And to get probably a top five guard in the NFL for a fifth-round pick, uh, two-year term, still on his kind It was so money. shocking to me. Like, is Bill trying to help Brady out? <laughs> it seems that way. Like from some, afar, he's like so, some moves. I love this Brady kid. Some so. moves, some moves, it, it, it make you scratch your scratch your head a little bit. Yeah. Um, uh, but this is another one of the you know I'm not. This is not crap on Bill time because I know. feel like I say this every off season though, and then I'm semi happy with the result. You know what I mean? Well, it, after I, I just feel like, listen, I didn't expect New England to go spend $100 million again like last year. They don't have it, and next year they got $120 million in cap. I expect more next year. Yes. So, and I don't know. The AFC I, is hidden. They don't but, have a chance. But, like, my, my thing, and I said this on the preview, was they didn't have to. Like, like signing J.C. Jackson to to the franchise tag, which he said he would play on, is not breaking the bank. No, it was not. It's, what like, is it? Seventeen million for Corn? Seventeen million. You know, right. like if they're not sold on him, it gives him that extra year to sell himself. He said he would do it. He'd be happy to do it. It was a raise for him. It was 
not breaking and the bank. Like you said, you got all that you're cap not, space. You're not married to the guy, you know. It's uh, you got all that cap space next year. If yeah. he played well, well, give him the goddamn contract. Get, yeah, if he exactly. plays worse, then, well, you get better. And the tickets. cap's gonna explode, I think, in two years. So like yeah. ne- next year it goes up, and then the year after that, poof, way up. I mean, you yeah. like these guys who are some, like the Von Millers and stuff. Like their their money's they're not. That's not gonna matter. No. You know, and like and and no, and. No. Those long term, uh, long term guys. You know, JC was signed five years in the Chargers. Like, unless he is horrible, and Belichick was right, which you know, far be it for me to you know tell Belichick how to run his team. But if he's right, I mean, great. I just like this is this is like you went from from Butler to JC. You know, like like, you you can't keep churning out these undrafted guys and expect Belichick to keep turning them into superstars. It's not sustainable. Yeah. But just like looking at it from team's perspective, like would you say that Gilmore and JC Jackson as your two corners, is that pretty good? Yes. Because between the two of them, (laughs) all New England got was a six-round pick. Yeah, it's gross. For two it's absolutely M. gross. For two of them, you know? Even now, I know Gilmore's not what he was, but... Still a number two corner. All know? he got between those two players in compensation was a six-round pick, and that is mind gross. Yeah. So, moving on to the Miami Dolphins here. And if I was a Dolphins fan, I would be totally ecstatic with this offseason. Yeah. I got them ranked very high in, uh, in what they've done. They got Tyreek Hill, and, but they did give up five picks. So, a 2022 first, second, and fourth round pick, and a 2023 fourth and a sixth round pick. Yeah. So, they did give up a lot of capital. But, it's Tyreek Hill, man. Like, yeah, he blows the top off every single defense. Every team in the league changed the way they play defense against the Chiefs only because of this man. Yeah. That's the only reason. They had to play cover two deep. And it gave Patrick Mahomes everything underneath. Easy throws to Kelsey. Tyreek run a go. Kelsey run a slam. Boom. Money. Yeah, Money like plays. Like I, I was I was listening to a podcast earlier and they were saying like like you can't jam him. He's so fast. Like you can't If you miss, you it's can't over. you can't jam him. So like teams teams are playing you know, 10, 15 yards off him, and then, you know, give him, a, right at give, give him a four yard in, and then that's what KC did against Buffalo, and, you know, peace on down the field. Like, yeah. he, like he can take a slant and, and literally slant and go because he's gone, yeah. right? So, like, you know, you have to play him a certain way. If you jam him, he's gone. And if you play off him, he can take and burst it anyway. It's, like, mm. it's crazy. He's a very, very... He's a deep threat at five yards. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> now, like, I'll start by saying, like, this... Trade made absolute sense for both sides. Like as much as people are saying, like why would Casey do this now while they're in the championship window? And 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 I said this to you when the trade first happened. Like five picks seems like a lot. It's two fourths and a six. Two of them are next year. Let's not go out of control and say that and Miami like, had to draft like like, like Casey. Year. Like you know nobody came out of this trade way ahead. Nobody. No. Like both sides, it worked. You know both sides probably aren't absolutely thrilled with what happened. Miami probably didn't want to give them that much money. But they seen the name, but like this, the, like Miami's off season as a whole, and I'll let you, I'll let you get into what else they did. But the, like this screams the sexy team that does all the moves, that wins the off season, and then does absolutely nothing with it. Yeah, like well, they're testing Tua. Yes, absolutely. Like that's this, the like this thing. This is what this. they're short right now as a quarterback because I believe they had a top <laughs> three or at least a top five to ten defense. Yeah. Uh, the past couple of years, because Flores was fantastic with them uh, defensively as a head coach, and then uh, like a, a, a large portion of what they did was offensive. So yeah. uh, you know, their quarterback away, unless Tua can really pull it together. So besides Tyreek Hill, they got Cedric Wilson off of uh, the Cowboys, which I thought was I th- I really thought the Cowboys were going to keep him as the number three. Yeah, very, that, I think that would have been smart. Very solid. He had 40, 45 receptions last year, six hundred yards, and six touchdowns. And if they keep Parker, which I've seen he is on the trade block per se, yeah. they, they they might move him. Teams are certainly asking. Cedric Wilson's number four. That's a great number four. Because they got Waddle, Hill, uh, Wilson, and who's the guy I was talking about? Parker. Devontae Parker. Devontae Parker. Who, who, who's, a, who's a stud? He's great. He's a great, great receiver. Great possession. Especially receiver. as a number three. Like, like he said, can get that's, you 60, 70 that's the Christian Kirk guy, you know, the, the real third guy who can, who can really make an impact. And they've really bolstered their backfield. They got Chase Edmonds from Arizona mm-hmm. and Raheem Mostert, 
who is unbelievable. And he, uh, the new coach, McDaniels, what's his first name? Uh, Chase? Chase, whatever it is, Chase McDaniels. I think. He he basically, him and Kyle Shanahan ran, the, ran the offense in San Fran. Right. And Raheem Mostert was a stud. He was there last year, but he was injured for most of the season. Like, Chase Edmonds is underrated, too, because, well, one, I had him on fantasy, so I know he's good. <laughs> and two, yeah. two, like, James Conner went ape shit with, like, ape shit. 18 touchdowns yeah. or whatever the hell he had by the end of the year. So, like, Edmonds had as much yards, but you didn't, he wasn't the shiny, flashy toy because Connor kept getting touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. Connor's plus, the goal line guy. Plus, he was hurt. Uh, Edmonds was hurt throughout the year, so Connor was playing solo uh, for quite a quite a bit of the season. So, yeah. uh, Edmonds would have been even better than what he was. So he's uh, he's definitely like they probably got a steal on him because he wasn't such a standout guy to sign. And uh, yeah, it was a great low key move, most or two. I mean, great picks, great pickups. Yeah. And as a backup plan, they t- they saw him Teddy Bridgewater, which I thought was fantastic. I didn't even know you know they did that. He had a similar he had a similar roster to this uh, Minnesota, when yeah. you know they had Jefferson, Thielen, uh, Conklin, and uh, Delvin Cook in the backfield. You know, it's going to be a very balanced. Definitely, offense. definitely comparable. And if Tua kind of shits the bed, you. Just see Teddy come in around Thanksgiving and clean things up, right? Or or gets hurt. I mean, two is two is very small. And to shore up the offensive line, and I guess to help in the run game, they signed Teron Armstead, who you said was ranked number one, ranked number and, one. and a lot of the top uh, side yeah. free agents before. I free, think that's mostly started. because he plays left tackle. Uh, well, left I mean, tackle such a valuable position. Uh, like if you were to rank the top like three to four positions on your team, left tackle is probably there. Yeah. And it's one of the higher paid. Positions Absolutely. as well. Yeah. And uh, they re-signed Mike Gusecki on a franchise tag, which I thought was huge. Which is a big it's, move A big move now. Like, it's like, probably too much money. Well, when we were comparing to Njoku getting the franchise tag, like Gusecki's numbers were blowing him out of the yes, water. So. Yeah. And they got multiple linebackers returning. I don't. I looked at their names, had no idea who they were, but I figured I'd mention them anyway. Mm-hmm. And under notable losses, I have none. <laughs> I looked at them, and it's all like third, fourth string linebackers, Couple third, fourth string corners. Yeah, their their team is it's solidified. It's very solid. And if two yeah. two is super accurate, but he, I, I don't know. At Alabama, you could see him get the ball down the field, but uh, he just hadn't seen it in the NFL so far. The unfortunate thing is like like they're a quarterback away, and two is on his rookie contract, and like that this is the kind of team you want. They got everything in place. The quarterback's on a rookie contract. Like they're in the win now mode. Like like if you. Haul Tua out and haul Justin Herbert out and switch, they'd be probably a favorite in the AFC. Like yeah. you know, that's just that's just the kind of it's just unfortunate that they got the wrong guy. I actually have faith in Tua. I think he's it's a it's a make or break accurate. year. I mean, I, I you know I'll I'll give him a chance this year. Like if yeah. if they if they're you know if they come out of this list, you know like they're that's a sexy team that you know doesn't always pan out like if they come out of this you know 7 and 10 or something like it's a disaster it's going to be a disaster yeah. yeah you know well they were what 9 and 10 last year they just missed the playoffs they just really missed, they, yeah. they really didn't miss by much so really they're hoping Tyreek Hill is a 2 to 3 game uh, I think swing. they they were a game behind New England I believe New England was a wild card so I mean if yeah. Ty, if Tyreek Hill and and the additional moves is a two two to three you know you're looking at eleven and six or something absolutely that, that'd be a good season that'd for be them. a good season for them yeah uh, then moving on to the New York Jets oh my god um, <laughs> it's on two tight ends which to me makes absolutely no sense but it's the Jets you know whatever. Maybe they're trying to establish a solid run game or something. But uh, C.J. Uzama from the Bengals, they got him. Tyler Conklin, he used to play with the Vikings. He was solid, but, you know, nothing crazy. Uh, offensive tackle, Lankin Thomason, he was with San Francisco. He, he, was, a, he was a good player for them. Uh, corner, D.J. Reed from Seattle. Uh, Jordan Whitehead from Tampa, that, that was a great signing for me. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean... Good. He's just going to waste his career. Solid money, too. I thought Tampa definitely could have matched. Yeah. And they got Greg Zerlin. Yeah. I mean, he's good kicker, whatever. But the Jets, uh, their offense just isn't good enough to get them in decent position. I definitely like the moves they made. I like Uzama. I like Whitehead. 
I, I like Conklin. I just know he's going to be a role player for them. And yes. then Greg DeLegg's a great kicker. Yeah. I mean... The only thing is just they are who they are. Like, it, like again, if you rank the teams in the AFC, they're in the bottom three to four teams. Like, it yeah. doesn't matter. Like, they're going to have another shit season. Solid. Like, like I said, none of these pieces are going to put them over the top by any means. Like I said, a nice little piece here and there to plug that in. Yep, nice... Shawnee toy, like I said. Put and maybe above. next year they go crazy on wide receivers. Maybe. Because they need it. They got well, Eliza well, Moore and who uh, else? Again, like... Lost Crowder. Well, Crowder. Crowder. I mean, if you want to put a notable loss there, it's Crowder. Like, like that was a piece that was good for them. Yeah. And now it's gone. So, uh... Yeah. Yeah, yeah so under notable loss, I had none. But, of course, we talked about James Crowder. We did. We did, yeah. yeah. So, he's gone. And uh, that kind of sums up the AFC East there, Shane. Um, yeah, so we'll move over to the AFC North now. Uh, one of the more quiet teams um, I really thought was going to be making a move this year because they just missed in the playoffs as well last year. Uh, Baltimore. They really... The thing about Baltimore, man, they started the season. They lost everybody. They lost, and, and, like, that's why, like, when you when you talk about and we're going to do a way too early prediction on where each team's going to end up next season standing-wise... Um, I I really do expect them to contend for this division. The only thing is, I thought they would add on what they had, and then you add on all, all the injuries coming back. I was like, okay, this team's gonna be, they're gonna be a force next year, yes. and and really, it's been it's been extremely quiet. Like they they were there were uh, talks being thrown around for Darius Smith, which I thought would have been a great move. Yeah, but you know. Like as their additions, I have I have two that stood out, and one of them's a fullback. <laughs> so oh, yeah, they signed R- Ricard, which is um, I believe he was with the Raiders. Okay. Um, what is it? Fullback. Okay, fullback. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, oh, now they used them. They're one of the more heavy teams that use the fullback, like New England, like. Uh, San, San Fran with use check. Uh, there's a couple teams that do use them. Uh, Raiders were one of them. So they they gave him a three year deal too. So like you see, you don't see that term either. with fullback. So very very interesting. Was there? No, there's not a change in coaching or offense coordinator or anything. Nothing really. Nothing. So not nothing that stands change. out now. I don't know if they're saving money to pay Lamar. Is my only logic mm. behind it that can make sense. But He's their, in his fifth year. Their other signing was Marcus Williams, and they did throw throw the bank at him for safety. Yeah. Five years, seventy million. So that was a solid move. Yeah, so that's 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 good for them. Uh, again, you're playing against a lot of really really good quarterbacks in the AFC. So somebody who's a, who's a ball hawk too. I mean, this guy's gotten Brady a couple times over in uh, when he's still with the Saints. So yeah, very very nice move there for them. But uh, they did lose some pieces too along the way. Uh, they brought in a lot of running backs last year, uh, like I said, with the team banged up. So Freeman, Murray, uh, free agents, don't expect them to be back at all. Uh, with Dobbins back, I don't worry about that. He's no. at work over No, there. these are very low. Uh, same thing, uh, wide receiver Sammy Watkins, don't expect him back. No. Uh, defensive end Calais Campbell, uh, defensive end Justin Houston. Again, these are one year, end of their career, you know. Or, what can or, you give us? Early to mid thirty guys. Can you give us five sacks? Plug in on a, on a rotation. Uh, linebacker Pernell McPhee, very very similar. So that was really all for them. Five or six names that left. Uh, only two and one of them that came in. One of them the fullback. So uh, I must say a little bit down on them this year. Uh, so now now we get to the Bengals. Um, let's start with the O line because that was the biggest biggest hole for them. So they definitely addressed that uh, this year. Seventy sacks over the season for Burrow. Right, God just damn. just getting killed. So they went and got Lyle Collins uh, from Dallas, uh, three year deal. Um, he's okay. He's not gonna blow your fucking. No, right. But I mean, he he, he is a tackle, right? But uh, so that is that is that is the the piece that they wanted to plug in. Um. And then they got Kappa from Tampa. Uh, very, very good deal here, too. $35 million, four years. That's uh, a good move. And then Take Harris from New England. Like, Take Harris was kind of like kind of a plug-in center. Mm. Like, he, he never full-on played center because they had David Andrews. Was He He must have been injured for a couple games or something, David Andrews. They, con- they kind of used him. Like, he, he did play some guard. Like, he was actually listed as an offensive lineman on, uh, okay. on the edition uh, page I was looking at. But uh, he, he is... He is a he is a center by by trade, I guess, uh, for lack of a better term. So, right. uh, so the Bengals brought in tight end Hayden Hurst. Um, just to touch on what we just said with the Jets, they lost Uzama, who was a pretty big piece of their. 
Was he Atlanta? He was, yeah. He was. I, 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 I don't know if he was with them last year. I think he might have been with Baltimore right. uh, as one of their secondary tight ends. Yeah, they but, wouldn't have him if they had Pitts. Yeah, right. So, uh, I don't know if he's going to full-on replace Uzama because, like I said, he's kind of taken a back seat in the past couple of years and been the secondary yeah. uh, tight end. So, we'll see there. Um, I think they might have been banking on Gronk. Uh, well, either that. Um, it's a pretty good class of tight ends soon to uh, draft, so I do expect them to draft one at some point. Yeah. Uh, they signed defensive tackle B.J. Hill to a three-year, $30 million contract. Uh, cornerback Eli Apple's back. He had a pretty good playoff run. And uh, as we touched he on... He had a couple terrible tweets, though. He did. <laughs> 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 coming from uh, coming from the Giants a few years ago, too. He's uh, he's kind of finding his own a little bit. Because uh, he had a rough stretch there at the end of uh, his time with the Giants. And then uh, we touched on last episode that Jesse Bates... Uh, safety, you got the franchise tag, so he's back yep. as well. Uh, and then in their departures, uh, besides Uzama, was uh, cornerback Trey Flowers, cornerback Vernon Hargraves, kind of a depth piece, and uh, their safety, Ricardo Allen, retired. Mm-hmm. On a team that's on the upswing, that's pretty uh, pretty interesting move for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, so moving on to <coughs> the Browns, uh, they had a pretty crazy offseason as well so far. Obviously Watson coming in, we'll see what happens there. Uh, will he be suspended? Will he not be? Um, they did address that they brought in uh, Jacoby Brissett as well. So, they did? Yeah. So if, if he is out five, six, four, you know, whatever amount of games he gets, uh, Brissett, you know, plug in, play those couple games. Um, of course, <laughs> Baker Mayfield is still on the roster. Mm-hmm. Uh, we assume within probably the next time we're having a podcast that he will be gone elsewhere. Any day now, any minute now, I expect him to be but gone. But I've been hearing, it's like, it's like a game of musical chairs. And the music is about to stop, and there's no chairs left. <laughs> Baker's just stood up there, just just like dancing, and well, there's just nothing, there's no there, room to there, go. There was chairs there, but then Matt Ryan took it, yes. and, and, and whoever else, like wherever else he was going, Carson Wentz took a chair, and there's no chairs left. And he Watson pulled the chair and that, from him. That was said, actually a great analogy, because he's the one who's left standing up, and there's no chairs, there's no teams, there's exactly. no there's no, nowhere to go. So, yep. you know, And, and the, the chairs for Seattle, Atlanta, those kind... Are three legged? They're vacant. Three legged chair. <laughs> but yeah, but they've got like an invisible body sitting there, a drafted quarterback, right? Yeah, Damn. it's uh, it, you know. So I'm glad they addressed that. That if if Watson does miss time, they do have a plan in place. That's yes. not you know some guy I've never heard of. Yeah. Uh, so another interesting trade that um, was a established star for a fifth round pick was Amari Cooper. Um, Dallas was going to cut him straight up. And uh, let him sign where he wanted, but uh, Cleveland, in what I thought was a pretty stout move to to get him before he was cut, because he probably wouldn't have went to Cleveland. No, um, and he probably would have only got offered junk too. So this kind of like pay wise, so, so it really out. did work. Amari was probably okay with that because he still gets a nice chunk change, uh, fifth round pick. Obviously, uh, didn't affect them going out and trading every other pick they had for Watson, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, just another thing I kind of skipped over uh, the contract, too, that Watson got, by the way. Uh, all of it guaranteed, 230 30. over five years, which is, again, a whole other wrinkle to uh, resetting the market because yes. now this is going to become a thing where, okay, it's not how much you the contract is, it's the guaranteed money that yeah. people are worried about. Now now this is like the first like fully guaranteed huge quarterback Contract in like NFL history, so this is going to become a thing. And like Lamar Jackson and Kyler Murray and those guys are lip- licking their freaking lips now because they're yeah. like, "Oh, okay, my well, <laughs> time's coming." Yeah. What what can I get now? And all of a sudden, that Patrick Mahomes contract doesn't look so bad. No, right? Like when, like when you like you mentioned earlier with the cap going up so much now in the next five years, absolutely. That contract's going to be sick for Kansas City down the road. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then, of course, they brought uh, David and Joku back with the franchise tag, which we thought was absolutely puzzling. Uh, they brought in Chase Chase Winovich uh, with the trade that we talked about earlier in uh, poor draft picks. Junk for junk. Junk for junk, that's right. Uh, so they did have a few departures uh, on offense that I think is going to have to be addressed uh, probably through the draft. Now, they did bring in Cooper, like I said, uh, but they did lose Higgins. Uh, they released Jarvis Landry, and their tight end Austin Hooper is a current free agent. Is still uh, on the market. So, 
Uh, there's definitely some holes there on offense uh, in terms of depth uh, mm-hmm. that they can they can use. Uh, I mean, obviously, still got people's jobs. Obviously, so. if, if if you look at uh, yes to do, if you look at a few of the receivers that were there in past years, Odell Landry. I mean, those are your top guys going into the past two or three seasons. They're yeah. they're both gone now. Odell has said that he might be interested in coming back. And Jarvis, which is interesting. Uh, both of them. Both of them, like I said, probably had issues with Baker and uh, not the team itself. So don't be shocked if they if end they up both back there. come back, their receiving core is going to be great. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you're sure. not going to know. You're not going to know who to put your number one corner on. No, because they're all that number two. They're all on the same level. You know what I mean? Yeah, and a lot of teams are in that hole right now where they got their second and third level, but they just don't have that number one guy. Mm. And I think Cleveland is uh, is kind of there. Like, we'll see what Amari Cooper can do. Maybe he can get a bit better. But even he's kind of, like, taking a bit of a step down to closer to a wide receiver two, I would say. Like, when he first yeah. went to Dallas, it was like, okay, this is the guy. And then CD came, and it wasn't really much discussion past that. So, yeah. Uh, but on defense, uh, Clowney, Malik Jackson uh, are current free agents that have not signed. So, again, we'll see. Clowney's kind of just been going to whoever offers him the biggest contract lately. Uh, the past couple years, one-year deals. So, uh, I don't know, maybe a Seattle or something like that. Uh, someone who's just trying to fill out a roster spot with some cap that they got. Yeah. Uh, expect that. And uh, they re- uh, their kicker and punter is gone as well. So, we'll see what kind of special teams they make up for. Uh, so to round out that division, we will look at the Steelers, uh, another puzzling team uh, for their inactivity. Right there, made the playoffs last year. Yes, they lost their quarterback, but was Ben Roethlisberger really a huge strength last year? I was no. 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 So they really have a lot of core in place. Um, you know, we'll see how that goes for them. But uh, For them, it was very settling having a veteran quarterback, though. Yeah. Like, if their play wasn't there, he'd win it out of bounds. Mm-hmm. When you got a young quarterback, yeah, to try and fit it in the tight window, pick going the other well, way. It's it's terrible field position. It's going to be the same thing, like, like not great throws, you know, some chemistry issues, da da da. But then you had in turnovers instead of like I said, smart plays. Yeah, so it could be worse for them. Now they did sign uh, Trubisky to two year, uh, fourteen point two five. That can go up to twenty seven million with incentives. Um, so we'll see. Uh, that goes for him. That's I don't know. Like I said, that's the musical chairs again. That they were a team that's looking for a quarterback, and they hey, kind of. He's a winning quarterback, though. You know, <sighs> you look at I know quarterback wins isn't a great stat or anything because right. Jimmy G is top five all time, mm-hmm. and we all know what he is. Uh, he's, he can't win you the Super Bowl. We've seen it. Right. But he can't eliminate Aaron Rodgers every now and again with a great defense, a couple special team touchdowns. Mm-hmm. But. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Trubisky, with Matt Nagy in in Chicago, he made the playoffs and he has a winning record. I believe he made the playoffs twice. Twice, there you go. Twice, yeah. And so he can do a bit of running. He's like a Josh Allen type guy with a lesser arm. So I expect big things from him on that offense. Now, of course, losing Juju, um, and they lost uh, McLeod. I think his name is. Um, they lost James Washington. So they lost a couple of receivers. Um, They'll probably adjust it in the draft. Well. Yeah, I mean, like I said, there's some get some depth guys in here. There's still, like I said, you know, bring a Julio in or something. You don't know. There's still some guys out there that they can bring in. Um, they lost their tight end, Eric Ebron, and cornerback Joe Hayden. Uh, but, yeah, they, uh, I, did, I did like um, they brought in Miles Jack, uh, linebacker, on a two-year deal. But besides that, uh, and the Trubisky move, not much of them. I had as a note for them, they had two linebackers and three cornerbacks I've never heard of. So a lot of depth pieces there. Their defense, of course, is strength of team, so not a, not a whole lot to make up there anyway. So that's it for Pittsburgh. Uh, a little bit disappointed with their inactivity, but uh, like I said, there's still the draft to come. Yeah. So moving on to the AFC West, uh, let's start with Kansas City. Take a deep breath now for you. So uh, I'm actually, from an objective standpoint, I'm not – mad about the Tyree Hill loss at all. If I was a Kansas City fan, I'm just going to break it down. So, Juju Smith-Schuster, they signed him for $10 million on a one-year deal. Yeah. They got Marquez valdez Scantling on a 30 mil contract could go up to 36 over three years. They got Ronald Jones for $5 million. And they got Justin Reed, a safety. Where did you say he came from? Uh, Houston. Houston. Houston, yeah. He, 
He's good. He's cheap, a hell of a lot cheaper than Tyron Matthew. But he's a poor man's Tyron Matthew. <coughs> Literally in terms of contract yeah. and play. Like he is a, a step down. <laughs> yeah. So just by not paying Tyreek Hill, they say thirty million dollars. Yeah. They got Juju Smith Schuster, Marcus Valdez Scantling, and Ronald Jones. All they got three one, players for one. One contract. And a shit ton of draft capital. Absolutely. They could they could draft a wide late in the first round oh, with that sure. twenty nine. And then and enter on a rookie contract. For exactly. Them, so. Yeah. And uh, they managed to re-sign Orlando Brown, offensive tackle, and defensive end Frank Clark. He got a big deal, and that's, that's a, a big, big deal, deal for his age. Yeah, twenty nine million over two years. Uh, I honestly don't think that's a good deal whatsoever. But they do need him now. In short term, you can get out of it. Yeah, right. That's that's a good thing. Like you don't see a guy that age getting a well, not sure Ron Miller, Miller. <laughs> getting a five six year deal. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it happens, I guess, but. That was a smart move to keep it short, at least. So if, yeah. if it doesn't, if he takes a turn for worse uh, with his age and decline, you can get out of it. Yeah. So basically giving up Tyreek Hill allowed them to make all those moves. So would you rather have Tyreek or have two of these five players? I mean, this is like, do they work out? Like, that's that's what it's like. Yeah. If all three of those players turn out to be good, of course, you'd rather, yeah. you'd rather do that. But, like, like you, don't say, have a number you, one don't, right you don't have that game like Juju... Scantling, certainly not freaking Ronald Jones, is going to take one play, one small handoff, or catch five yards and break it downfield. No. That's what they're losing. Patrick Mahomes is going to have to learn to play against a defense that's not cover two. In terms of his catches and his receiving yards, those two, Scantling and Juju, will combine to get that. I'm yep. not, like, the stats of it, yep. not worried about. It's the game-breaking... I'm going to score a touchdown. Like they, it's like, the first quarter against when Tampa t- When Tyreek took that pass and broke it off, not only not only did he take a five-yard uh, slant and go 70 yards, he did. it was a minute to go in the game. Mm. Like it was the timing of it. Like like They needed to score at that exact moment. He did it in one play. Yep. Now, Buffalo had left them too much time to game, but that was, just, that was just how crazy that game was. Yeah. Like in, in any other normal story, if they're playing Team X in the regular season, that's probably the game. Yep. They don't have that game-breaking playmaker – you could say Travis Kelsey. Yeah, but they're gonna, they're gonna to throw him. they're gonna throw everything at him now, and he's thirty three in October. He's yeah. not a spring chicken anymore. Like he, like, like he's not. <laughs> <laughs> like that's the, I love that. He's saying, he's, he's he's getting up there. I mean, like you know, I'm not saying he's gonna be junked. I'm sure he's I'm sure he's gonna be good for twelve hundred yards for the next couple of years. But like, can you keep banking that he's gonna be that guy at that age eventually? He's gonna kind of hit that wall. He's gonna. He's never hurt. I mean, as he gets older, injuries might be more. But and and if he goes down, can you depend on those guys then to step up? Like neither one of those guys. And this is where I'm talking. All of those guys are number two. Hmm. So unless they're and they gotta nail them draft picks too, because yep. they're those draft picks they got gonna start and be playmakers this year. That's what they need because they're in win now. I think I think this was a move for the future. But it, but that's what I mean. It, it has you to be. Got Mahomes for ten years. But it, well, like if they can say, okay, let's take a minor step back this year, and you know they'll still make the playoffs. Maybe as a wild card or something. And yeah. then, you know, if they don't, you know, get put out the, the wild card or whatever. And then that draft pick turns two or three years. Okay, now now they got a receiver, not of Tyreek's level, but they got a receiver for the next five or six years. Yeah. Okay, absolutely. Great. It, it definitely, yeah, it definitely could pan out. Like I said, if, if the if the draft picks work out and the guys they sign with Tyreek's money work out, it's it's a great deal. That's why I said it. I don't hate it either for both sides. It really did work for both sides. But not only that, like, the thing with Tyreek is it's not like they were like, yeah, let's move Tyreek now because I think he's gonna he's 29, he's not as fast. That was part of it, but he wanted to leave. Yeah, Their hands were tied. He was not coming back. I'm not sure he wanted to leave. I think it was mainly well, because he wanted, Kansas City wouldn't give him the money. They wouldn't, yeah, he wanted to stay on a certain price tag. And, I mean, obviously Kansas City smartly was like, okay, it's the same thing as Devontae Adams. Nobody wants to trade Devontae Adams. No. He, they, they priced themselves out, and they, they're, not, they're not given a choice, and their hands are tied. So classic, yeah. And uh, as for notable losses, obviously Tyreek Hill. We've been over this a bunch of times now. Uh, Tyron Matthew, you know, Honey Badger. It's he's a great player, but he also wants a massive contract. Yeah, and he's still on the free agency market, which not, I don't get. I don't, I don't understand that. I don't know if I'm trying to think like his age now. Did he ever get a huge contract? Like that's what I'm thinking. Did he ever get one? 
Because, like, I don't know. he was with Arizona, then he was with Houston, and then he went to the Chiefs. So, like, maybe Houston gave him a bigger deal. Like, because there's some of those guys who have been, like, you know, two, three years, two, three years, and they never really got that huge contract. Like Trent Brown earlier with the Patriots. Like, like he, he went away, got a huge deal, didn't work out, came back to New England. Like, those kind yeah. of guys. But, like, I don't know if Matthew it was like that where – he he got paid and then he's like shit. then he's like okay now I'm just gonna go win a ring which he did in KC and he certainly was on a Super Bowl team that went uh, and lost to Tampa so like I don't know is he gonna go looking the seems like he's looking for money now that's you know mm-hmm. with him still being out there he of of the remaining free agents on like ranking list like I was talking about with the top 100 or whatever he is the top remaining so I don't expect him to be out there for a long time but if he wants money I mean God knows where he's gonna end up. Mm-hmm. Um, Couple more notable losses. Uh, Byron Pringle maybe had 500 yards, 400 yards last year, yeah. 40 receptions, something like this. He's a speed guy, but he kind of sucks to lose when you lose Tyreek Hill as well. Mm-hmm. You lose two of your big speed two, guys. Two here. speed guys, yeah. You still got McCole, McCole Hardman. Yeah. He's fast as hell, too. Yeah. Melvin Ingram is still, still unsigned. He's a free agent. Um, I don't expect him to go back there. Me neither, no. I think he. But, I think he would have by now. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. After all this Tyreek dust settled, you yeah. figure. I think he he would have been in that. You know, here's a five million contract for you. Here's a yes. five, he would have been in that mess. So, yeah. and finally, it was Daniel Sorensen, the backup safety. That's big. That's that, big as well. That's big. Like they're they're a bottom five defense, and they lost three starters. Yeah. So they did gain back. They also three, lost. Um, Ward, their cornerback, as one of their two starting cornerbacks. So they lost three pieces of their secondary. Mm. Uh, plus Melvin Ingram, uh, you know, uh, the quarterback certainly got better in the AFC West. So, like I said, uh, don't just assume that KC's going to go wide receiver with those picks. They got to yeah. they got to nail them on defense. There's a lot of too, holes. Like I said, they had a bottom five defense anyways, and they lost three starters. It's just not it's not getting any better. No. So moving on to Vegas, who I thought had a great offseason. Not a hell of a lot of moves, but the moves they made were young. Yeah. Knock them out of the park, man. So, Devontae Adams. Uh, <clears throat> in Green Bay, wouldn't play on her franchise tag. There's no state tax in Vegas. So, they were able to offer him $142 million over five years. <clears throat> Green Bay was actually going to give him more than that to make up for the loss in income right. tax. Right. But he said, no, I want to go to the Raiders. So... First and the second round pick, here he is at the Raiders. I feel like that's such a great move for them with Darren Waller, Renfro. It, it's going to be a solid offense. Very solid. High flying. It's Josh Jacobs sitting back there who is great. He's pretty good, but he He's also solid. has Very some solid. downtime. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He'll have some games of 40 yards, and then they'll have 80, 90. I think that's the thing with them now is like they have the team on paper, but I don't know how much depth is there. Mm. And a lot of these guys are synonymous. Uh, not so much Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams has been very healthy yes, uh, throughout his career. But uh, Jacobs and Waller, they never get hurt, but they get banged up. Yeah, Nick. They miss, uh, you know, four or five games a year. Mm. Like, like they're always like, it's, it's like Gronk or something. They're always dealing with something. Yeah. Like something's always there nagging them. Yeah, that's right. And they picked up Chandler Jones off Arizona. Uh, not by trade, but free agent. Uh, they made a trade with Indianapolis, like Shane mentioned earlier. Rock your sin. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool name. But they got rid of um, uh, Yannick Ngakwe. Yes. Who was, they replaced with Chandler Jones, basically. With a better player. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. this is an upgrade. Yeah, he was he was expendable with uh, Jones and, of course, the next move. Yeah. Uh, Deron Harmon. He, uh, former Pat, right? Safety. I loved him. He was... He was uh, good shit. He was... They, they called him the closer because he would always make the pick. Like, at the end of the game yes. when... Throw when, it up. When you're up by four points and the other team's driving down to get the win and then he picks it off and the game's over. So, he was... Uh, yeah, special play in our place. Good shit. I'm, not, I'm not sure how old he is. He but, mu- he's getting there because he uh, he was with New England for quite a while, and then he was just with uh, Atlanta last, I believe. Um, right. So yeah, he uh, I say he's so for a winning team. Twenty nine thirty. Yeah. Uh, they also re-signed Max Crosby to a massive deal, four year extension, hundred million. Uh, to pair him with Chandler Jones, that is that is going to be nice. <laughs> it's terrifying. It's absolutely insane. Well, 
That's the move that I talked about with Yannick and Gakwe. I mean, you got two of those guys on either side. I mean, who who do you double there to? Your offensive line is just going to be spread right. It's, on. it's, it's linebackers the, coming it's, on the blitz. It's the Rams conundrum, right? Like who yeah. who do you double, and then whoever's freed up, and then if not, you got a nose tackle there who's one on one every time. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 such a luxury to have in the league. And, and again, with pretty with, well every team in this division besides Kansas City has that. With the strength that quarterback in in that division now, I mean, that's how you immediately counteract it. Yeah. So the notable losses we had wide receiver Zay Jones, uh, the punter, not actually a punter, but we watched a couple games and pass catching punter. Yeah, um, Yannick Ngakwe, he's gone to the Colts like we just mentioned. Uh, Gerald Gerald McCoy, Quentin Jefferson, KJ Wright. You know he's on the downswing, but he a, he's a solid veteran. He was in the Legion of Boom. Yep, and uh, cornerback Casey Hayward, he's gone as well. So, overall, I'm pretty satisfied with the Raiders offseason. Um, moving on to the Chargers. Yeah, this division is absolutely loaded. Oh, my God. So, they they traded for Khalil Mack, who in his prime in Chicago was actually compared to Aaron Donald. They were right there, you know, going back and forth. And then Khalil Mack kind of took a... Maybe it was a lack of motivation with mm-hmm. Chicago. I kind of think that was an issue with him. Like he, like he got paid a little, took his foot off the gas. I think he's one yeah. of those scenarios. And he started to losing. You know, he was great when they were in the playoffs and yeah. winning games and stuff. But well, was, like I said, he was a big piece of those couple of playoff teams that went to the Walker and yeah, whatnot. And uh, and the old Homer, the old pet, J.C. Jackson, eighty-two and a half million over five years. That you know. You need that shutdown corner, Which, that playmaking corner. Again, it is less than what the franchise tag would have been, but of yeah. course he's got the stability with the five years. Yeah, that's right. And they've re-signed Mike Williams to a $60 million over three years. That's great. And they re-signed their kicker. Yeah. So some notable losses, Chris Harris, cornerback, and tight end Jared Cook. Well, I don't think it's a loss at all, Jared no. Cook. No. He's a chronic I mean, fumbler in a big moment. Yeah, you can you can <laughs> you can easily <laughs> fill him with with one of those debt pieces. Yeah, that'll come in, and of course, J.C. Jackson fills right in for Chris Harris. Yeah, that's a home run of an off season, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. and now to maybe the biggest move this entire off season was Denver Broncos getting Russell Wilson with a trade with Seattle. Uh, they gave up three players: Noah Fant, Shelby Harris, and uh, Drew Locke, of course. And a couple draft picks. Well, I thought it was worth it. You got your franchise quarterback now for the next five years. This this franchise is going to be on the come up with all their wide receivers, and they, they're going to be good shit. They got this uh, Javante Williams. Yeah, running back. Yeah, solid last year. He was a second. He'll be even better now with a pass game. Second round back out of North Carolina. He was. Um, it was. <laughs> it was between him and uh, God. Who's the guy the Jets took? Uh, Carter. Carter, yeah, like two of them are. Carter. They were on the same team. Hmm. Uh, they were both, and they were both in the second round on the same team. So I was like, which one? Yeah. Which one was gonna go first? Right. That's why I remember we were in school. I usually don't because right? hmm. we don't we don't watch uh, much college football here. But uh, yeah, I just remember two of those guys being in the draft. They're in the same round on the same team, and it was just like who was gonna go first. I think the I think the Jets got Carter first because they usually yeah. have a low pick, and uh, and they, they both turned out great. Yeah, yeah, they both turned out to be really great picks. Yeah. So. so notable losses: Melvin Gordon, the running back. He's going to be replaced by Javante Williams. Uh, defensive tackle Shelby Harris and Noah Fant, the tight end. They were traded to Seattle. Uh, Shelby Harris is a great leader on that team. He was. But, uh, you know, you lose him to get Russell Wilson. Ultimately, uh, just a great offseason for them. Well, I mean, the Randy Gregory one was interesting because he accepted the contract in Dallas and then uh, didn't like how... The uh, suspension wording in there. Uh, if something ever happened, he has a history, of course, of some off-field yeah. uh, suspensions, uh, PD kind of deal. And uh, you know, if, if something were to happen uh, in Dallas, he he would have lost a lot of money. So he said, "Void his guarantees." Denver's going to offer me the exact same contract um, without know, that word. With without that, so uh, yeah, he changed his mind. Went there. Yeah. All right, we'll move on to the NFC North here now, Shane. Um, yeah, we're going to go with the South first, actually. Okay. Um, gonna... Yeah, I'm going to look at uh, Atlanta first. Um, like I said, it seems like they're they're <coughs> they're lost. I mean, you know, the person I feel worse for here is probably Kyle Pitts. He, you know, he comes there, he used to work with a nice, Sad. good veteran, solid quarterback, and 
now he's like the last man on the island there uh, with no one else around. I mean, Julio's gone. Calvin, Ridley, Calvin, gone. Calvin Ridley's gone. Gage is gone. Matt Ryan's gone. Patterson's gone. They signed Cordell Patterson oh, back, though. Back? They signed okay. him back. Right, yeah. Right. He's, uh, so they signed him back to a two-year deal. Um, so the, Fa- the Falcons replaced Matt Ryan with Marcus Mariota. Uh, very, very strange deal. Uh, he got a two-year deal. But there's an option on the second year. And he gets paid a roster bonus if he's there on the fifth day of the new league year next year. So basically... If they don't have a quarterback... The new time. league year is like the start of free agency, correct? So if they want to go sign somebody, they can. And they're not on the books for any money. But if he's still there on by day five, hmm. they have to pay him so much. That's so a great option. If, if they don't make a move at quarterback next offseason... They can stick with him, but they have a team option that if they want to sign somebody, they can get clear of it. This is a very interesting, like, like so with the wording with Randy Gregory. Yeah. It's uh, there's a little bit of finagling there in that contract, but it's a two year deal on on, on paper uh, if, if he stays. Right. Uh, so in running back room, like I said, Patterson and Damian Williams, who was part of the KC Super Bowl run a few years back, uh, they signed back their tackle Jake Matthews, three year, fifty two point five. That's probably their bigger signing. Uh, Casey Hayward, two year, eleven million, uh, from the Raiders, I believe he's yeah. coming from, and that's, uh, a good, that's a good signing. Probably the biggest kicker contract I've ever seen uh, for Young Way Koo, who's Young Way, <laughs> who's great, <laughs> great kicker, five year, twenty four point two five million. I don't know, Justin Tucker may beat that. I have no idea. Yeah, I'm sure he got, a good but he is good shit. Him. But yeah, he he's good. He's good. I really like him. Um, of course, Matt Ryan left. Gage left to the Bucks. Uh, wide receiver Tajay Sharp, uh, tight end Hayden Hurst, we mentioned before. Uh, Aluakon, uh, the linebacker that was leading the league in tackles last year, and Jaron Harmon. So a lot of their core pl- core pieces and players gone. Uh, seems like they're gonna go complete rebuild. We'll see what Mariota can bring with them, but I don't imagine they're gonna be winning a whole lot of games this year. Right. Uh, so on to Carolina, very similar situation. They had a lot of their chips in the Deshaun Watson basket, and he didn't decide to go with them. Uh, so they really, um, they really still have money to spend. The only <laughs> big money contract they had was wide receiver DJ Moore, three year extension for sixty one point nine. So very similar to the Mike Williams contract, little touch more. Um, but, yeah, he's been really good. He's really good in fantasy. Uh, I really like what I see from him. Of course, on a bad team, he's usually a bad quarterback, mm-hmm. so he's definitely a good player to have. Yeah. Cam Newton's on him back? Uh, not yet. He's not there yet, but I imagine, I mean, with, like, little yeah. little options at quarterback, I mean, you think to be – I don't know, man. The you, most useless guy <laughs> on earth. You think they would be – well, of course, it's just so ironic you say that. Like, you'd think to be a team who wants Baker. Mm-hmm. Probably the better of the available quarterbacks left, and of course, like the two top quarterbacks in that draft was Baker and Sam Darnold. Both of them are just like gross. looking for somewhere with stability, yes. like just looking for something. Um, but anyways, as as of now, he is departed again. We uh, and we'll I haven't back. heard much of the talks for uh, Christian McCaffrey. There's been talks of him getting traded. Well, but he's gonna suffer the rest of his fucking career. I sent I sent you an article. Uh, might even been before Fridge even started. Uh, that Buffalo was intrigued by him. Of course, <laughs> what a great move that would be. Um, I don't even know how much money could they fit that in the cap. I'm sure they can, like I said, do some you know cap can and road. cap magic that always happens to make room. But geez, what a move that would be if they can get him. They should definitely keep trying I, I i can see that being a draft day trade perhaps yep. for him uh, that'd, that'd be nice something uh exciting hopefully on draft day to see uh but yeah uh they signed safety xavier woods three years uh johnny hecker one of the rams kicker he threw, the threw, punter threw a lot yeah the punter that belichick called him a weapon one time yeah he's so good um so they signed him and they signed kicker zane gonzalez as well so some special teams moves uh DJ Moore, really the big thing. A couple departures, uh, linebacker, Reddick, uh, cornerback, A.J. Boye, of course, Steph Gilmore, uh, still out there too. So, I mean, he's, uh, again, one of the higher-ranked guys that are still out there uh, in terms of freedom. So, uh, don't see him going back to Carolina again. I think he would have done it by now if he was going. So, we'll see where he ends up. Hey, that Carolina defense was solid last year. They were. They were coming they were. after you. Like, they were. I don't know if they ended up being top ten. I imagine they didn't. But I'm sure they probably – Top fifteen, bumped down, yeah, middle of the road somewhere. But like, it was, it was because they're on the field so damn much. I mean, it wasn't really their fault per se. Like the first half of the year, they were insane. Yeah, that's right. 
Um, so one of the more interesting teams going into free agency again is uh, New Orleans. We don't really know. They were in limbo now ever since Drew Brees left, even though Drew Brees wasn't really himself the last couple of years. They were still a contending team. Um, they didn't miss the playoffs by a ton this past year. Um, I fully expect they'll be in the mix again this year. Um, they did bring James Winston back to year $28 million. Uh, Interesting to bring him back. Uh, he didn't do a whole lot for him, and he got hurt. So... See what he's like coming well, out the, the, the first ACL. game with him through four or five touchdowns. Yeah, they were like MVP, and then <laughs> and then he just you know, tore his leg clean up. James Winston thing. So, of course, he tore his ACL against Tampa too. So that was their dastardly. Yeah, ver- ver- they were con- <laughs> they were competing in that game too. Oh, absolutely. Well, well, uh, New Orleans still won. They did. So yeah. t- technically, he he got the win because he started. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they did sign quarterback Andy Dalton today. Uh, they actually did that about an hour or two before we got on. So um, there's also a report today that uh, Taysom Hill is going to take reps at tight end. They want to convert him to tight end. That's what they're looking tight to do. Tight end. That's what they're looking to do with him. This like Jesus. this is like Tim Tebow 2.0. It's just yeah. like this big stocky guy with jack white arms flailing around that they want to put at tight end. So I can't see him at tight end. Bizarre move if so. Yeah. Um, they retained Traquan Smith, a uh, two-year deal, one of their better receivers who nobody knows. Um, they signed um, – this is like the poor man's uh, honey badger. They signed safety Marcus May, three-year, 28.5. This is to replace Marcus uh, Williams. Uh, like cheaper, poor version. <laughs> like I said, a little bit less skill, a little bit less money, but it's what they had to do. Uh, and they did get uh, Daniel Sorensen as well from uh, from the Chiefs. Terms are unknown. Uh, they didn't have uh, the term or uh, the money. money. Yeah. Uh, so with them bringing in Dalton and Winston, uh, Trevor Simeon's gone. Uh, Ty Montgomery that we mentioned is going to New England. Taron Armstead was to the Dolphins, as mentioned. Uh, Quan Alexander, uh, linebacker, uh, used to be a buck. Uh, left to go to the Saints. Uh, they just signed him on a cheap one-year deal. Um, they made the playoffs, of course, lost to Tampa later that year. He was a pretty big part of that team. He was really good for them last year as well. He just keeps signing one-year cheap deals. Uh, he's not signed yet. Interesting guy out in free agency. I don't know. Mm. Just a depth piece, I assume, at this point because he wasn't like the main guy in New Orleans, but he was playing well there, uh, especially for the contracts he was on. So uh, interesting he's still out there. Uh, cornerback PJ Williams again, very very good player. Um, I believe he's still out there as well. I don't believe he's signed. Uh, and of course, as mentioned, Marcus Williams to the Ravens, big, big money deal. Uh, New Orleans cap hell, as always. They're looking better now because I think they were also clearing some cap for Watson, but he went elsewhere. So, is it worth mentioning the last of Alvin Kamara? Because I'd imagine he's going to be gone for the year. Uh, do you, do, you do you think, think he gets, gets the Deshaun Watson, Watson commissioner, commissioner exempt list? Not on the commissioner exempt list, but you're on the commissioner exempt yeah. list. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, they don't officially come out and say it, but like he's they probably... They can't let him play. No. There's I mean, video so... of them beating the shit out of some guy. Almost, almost to death. death. Like, yeah. just, just, One know. guy kicked him in the head 16 times while his buddies give him gut shots. I mean, even if it wasn't him, it's one of those guilty, guilty by association. Yeah. You're on camera. His posse or whatever. Yeah, but... You, you know, know unfortunate that, that was at the Pro Bowl too. Like it was, it was NFL. Morning, like he was there because of the like. So it was NFL related. So they stayed in the hotel that night. Mm-hmm. They gambled and whatever. Went to the casino. Mm-hmm. Went leaving the casino. Beat shit out of a guy. Mm-hmm. Woke up the next morning. This was six a.m. Yes. Went to the hotel. Probably daylight out of this. Morning. Slept for like five hours. Got up, played Pro Bowl. So it was actually before. Oh, it was before? Pro Bowl. Oh, I thought, I thought it was, was like after, after the game, game that night. night. It was before because they played Pro Bowl and he left. That is that crazy. Night. I never knew that. That is nuts. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's unfortunate. And I guess another addition you might be able to say is uh, wide receiver Michael Thomas. He'll be back. Yeah. 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 Addition, yeah. He, yeah. Not uh, an addition by, you know, injury or whatever it was. He's got a bunch of surgeries and stuff. Yeah, ankles got. Yeah, very, very strange. But yeah, no, he, he, he should be he should be back uh, yeah. by all assumptions. Almost 18 months. Um, so moving on to Tampa, I won't spend a whole lot of time here because some moves that we had discussed already and, and we also spent a lot of time on who's going who's coming on Tampa in previous pods. But, I mean, obviously one of the biggest news stories since all this happened was Tom Brady unretired. So yeah. Very, very – I didn't see this one coming. I, I, I will say, like, as much as I wanted it to, like, like I, I believe we were talking about it uh, after we got off the pod last time, uh, whether or not – like, I was like, I was just like, he had the news because it's not going to happen. I guess there was something to it because he, he came back. Uh, 
you know, the Rams GM was like, uh, fuck them picks. I think Brady was like, fuck them kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he, was there, he was there. He was home for two months. But see, like, all this works. All, 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 all this works out. Like, because he, he usually plays in February. And then by, like, April, May, he's ready to get going again. So, the same thing. Yeah. Like, he went and he had his two months, but it was just earlier this year because he got knocked out. So, by the time, like, March is there, he's like, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going back. I can't do this. Yeah. yeah I just, but I had heard that he, during the time he was retired, yeah, he was talking to Sean Payton, and he was trying to get him to go to Miami, take the head coaching job, mm-hmm. and Brady get traded to Miami. Both of those guys set up Miami. He beats the shit out of Belichick twice a year. Like, I can see that being the case while he was retired. I don't see any merit to it now. Like he, no, he he's Jordan's been split. he's been actively trying to recruit people to Tampa. Why? Why? Yeah, like, that why? would just be it wouldn't it wouldn't make people. any sense at all. You know, and a lot of them did come back. Like it's not like if he did it and like a lot of guys were signed elsewhere and he's like, okay, this team's not looking good. Yeah, he signed back and then like an hour later, Jensen was like. Well, I'm suited up for the boxing game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like, like you're the, just you're the just only screwed. thing that can make any bit of sense is for like, okay, maybe he he's not fully committed to the team. His Gronk is not back yet. So maybe he's like, okay, he's waiting for the last. Into, game. Yeah, he's waiting to see. Okay, Brady gets traded. I can sign because if he signs to Tampa, Brady gets traded. I mean, obviously that's a mess. So, yeah. um, you know. Everyone's like, oh, Gronk's well, fine. Maybe that's the sign. Brady's like, telling him to hold off or something. Perhaps it is. I don't know. Like, he seems, you know, 50-50 on his future. But he also said, like, well, Brady made me wait on the fence for a month, so I'm going to make him wait. So, you know, he, he, seems, he seems to be tongue-in-cheek about where he's going and that he's coming back. So, uh, uh, you know, to this point, I expect him back. But I do have him on their uh, departure list as of right now. Uh, so, uh, just run down the offense. Fournette back three years, $21 million. He visited with New England, but besides that, it seems like he had a lot of interest. But uh, it's a pretty good contract for him. Uh, we talked about Shaq Mason coming in for a fifth-round pick. Absolutely fantastic move for them. Uh, they signed back Chris Goblin after he was put on the franchise tag. Uh, three years, $60 million. Uh, pretty, again, that was right on with the Mike Williams, right, contract? So, uh Great I think he's a better player than Mike Williams, too, so I wasn't really too upset with the money. I think it's pretty much what he was going to get. Yep. He's coming off an injury, still gets $20 million a year. Like, he's been such a loyal guy, man. you got to give him two Not years. one bit of him. Like, he, he openly said, I want to be here. Like, yeah. that that was... He's a buck. That's it. Yeah, he's... Uh, yeah. Now, only a three-year deal. I was a little bit surprised it was a little bit of a shorter term, but I guess... Team like had said, leverage for injuries. He, he has been banged up. Like, like, even years that it wasn't an ACL, like, he broke his finger last year and he's had a couple games. Like, like he's one of those guys who always has something going on, too. Yeah. Um, so, uh, no, I mean, really worked out for both sides. Uh, Russell Gage coming in three years, $30 million. Absolutely love that move. That's a steal. Love that That's move. such a great move. He's a very, very good uh, guy who can come in in that third role. He can also play the second role if one of those guys are out. Evan, Evans has something going on. Goblin has something going on. He can, if he, Especially if Goblin's not there at the start of the season, which we'll, we'll see. Uh, he got hurt around December, so I'm thinking it'll be uh, you look at the nine-month you know, September, that's right when the season starts. He at least probably won't be 100% himself, so you got a little they bit of They say he's two months ahead of time. Yeah. Which is great. They all say that. I've never seen a guy tear his ACL and say I'm behind schedule. Never. They all say I'm, I'm ahead of schedule. All of them. Yeah, but for them to say two months ahead of schedule. That's, it's that's more, specific. It's more, it's more specific yeah. than what most people just like, like Winston said, they all say that. Yeah. But like to say, okay, we're supposed to be here, I'm actually here. Yeah. It does give a bit more of a, Behind There's the actual behind the curtain time. look at what's going on. So yeah, yeah. no, that is uh, positive to see. Um, so they're uh, they brought back Perryman as well. So their their receiver group, which again, if he's a cheap one year deal for uh, wide out four, pretty good deal. Yes, sir. Um, I think they're 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 gonna lose somebody that they had last year, whether that's Grayson or Scotty Miller, uh, Darden, Tyler Johnson. They're only gonna bring about six guys. That's four for sure. That's gonna be there, and then you got those other four. To battle it out. They Scotty might, Miller got to stay, man, doesn't they, he? They may draft one. I actually think he's more likely out just because they drafted Darden last year. So he's only been there one year. So you right. think he's he's there for sure. So that's five there for sure. You only got room for one, maybe two more. And then same thing, Tyler Johnson was drafted, whereas Scotty Miller kind of ran his course. So I'm thinking if they're going to lean one way, it would probably be Tyler Johnson. But I would not be upset if it was the other way around. 
Uh, Debt O-line uh, pieces that came... Well, I'll, I should say Ryan Jensen first uh, center, three-year, $39 million. Uh, like I said, as soon as Brady was back, he was lining up at Walmart for the baby powder. <laughs> <laughs> With his new $39 million check he got, so... Uh, so yeah, we were talking. Can you uh, change this for a million twenty? <laughs> we, were, we were talking about his uh, bad Tampa swamp ass. So that's good. That, that's good that the baby powder is on sale down there in Tampa. So yeah. Uh, so they brought in some debt O line pieces, of course, uh, to back up now with Wells and Stinney. Uh, their O line's pretty much set. I mean, if they there's potential, they draft one at twenty one. Like there's a really good guard that keeps getting like in mock drafts. Zion Johnson mm-hmm. constantly getting put uh, there, but like if they get him, they will bar none have the best O line of football. Yeah. I don't think they'll they'll go that way because there's more defensive uh, pieces they need, in my opinion. But man, there's a, there's a couple good safeties. Yeah, I know uh, Kyle Hamilton. He'll probably go top fifteen. Yeah, top sixteen. Yeah, there's a couple. I'd prefer him to go safety if anything, because uh, like they do have Edwards, of course. Uh, Winfield is an absolute stud. Uh, but his time's coming to get paid soon. Uh, Edwards, I don't think he's sustainable, and certainly no debt there if either one of them get hurt. So I, I expect him to go safety or even corner if if they're not sold on Murphy Bunting or Dean. Yeah. Uh, so I expect them to go secondary, but uh, if they do go t- uh, with twenty one on Zion Johnson, like I said, wouldn't I wouldn't be pissed either. Uh, and then they brought in on defense Logan Ryan, which I thought was a very interesting move because yeah. he's he's a flexible piece in terms of he's listed as just a defensive back. He has history as a cornerback. He has history as a safety. That's what he recently – and that's usually what happens. They play as a cornerback. Uh, you know, they start to get slower, older. They're not developing how they yeah. want. They slide him to safety. It's a little bit easier. You're seeing the whole you field. You get paid more at safety too. Absolutely. And uh, – he didn't. He got a cheap one-year deal, but but he's coming in. But it works because if there is injuries like last year with a lot of a lot of cornerbacks going down here and there, you can bring him in. instead of Son and Richard Sherman, Good which, which didn't do all. He can slide in from the safety. He can start at safety right now because, like I said, they only got the two guys. So he's right now he's the third safety. So he's a depth safety, but he can also be used as a depth corner if needed. So I really like that move. Yeah. Absolutely cheap. Uh, you know, obviously he was. Uh, Pick six on Brady's last pass in New England, so I'm sure he busts his chops a little bit about that. <laughs> uh, so on to departures. Uh, running back, uh, Bernard. Uh, he's out there. I can't expect him to come back, actually. A cheap one-year deal, maybe. Uh, I think there's a little bit left there. Especially um, with Jones guy. Yeah, they, like, because Tampa doesn't have a lot going on at running back. Like I said, they got Vaughn still. Uh, Lenny's back, and then that's it. Uh, so again, you need a pass catcher. Too. Definitely, no is good if that. if Bernard or or you know running back X that catches passes don't come back, I fully expect them to draft uh, yep. somebody in there. Um, Ronald Jones, of course, gone to the Chiefs. OJ Howard gone to the Bills. <laughs> Gronk, of course, we talked about can still come back. Kappa to the Bengals. We mentioned Marpet retired. Uh, JPP and Indomitian. Uh, Indomitian. Indomitian Sue. Yeah. Hard ass name to say. Sue, still out there. The end throws people Bo- out. Both of them. Yeah, I just want to say <laughs> Domican. So JPP and Sue, both still out there. I don't know. Do you expect either one of them back? I personally do I, I, not. I just don't think they got the catch space to do it. No, I, I mean, if they're going to use, like, they don't have a whole lot of space left. They can still restructure Brady with some dummy years because right now he is a free agent. But that's the thing. If you sign him with the dummy years, he might. Be locked in with Tampa, and we said we don't know yeah. what yeah. he'll do. So we'll we'll see. That's an interesting uh, uh, development, uh, perhaps with Brady. But um, yeah, safety. Uh, Jordan Whitehead to the Jets, of course, and that's why they're a little bit short on safety, as we mentioned. I expect them to go there and draft, and uh, that is it for the NFC South. So the NFC East, my least favorite division. Um, Dallas Cowboys, not a hell of a lot going on. Uh, they signed linebacker Dante Fowler. Which I thought that was a pretty good move. He was good in Atlanta. Um, they re-signed Michael Gallup, fifty-seven point five over five years off a torn ACL. I, I did not. I didn't like this move at all to move off Cooper and sign him. Who, who knows when he'll play again? I don't love him as a number two, but in terms of the money, like if he does turn out to be a number two, that money is fantastic. Yeah, that money's good. Fantastic. It's very team friendly. Yeah, very team friendly. Uh, they if put it works. a franchise tag on Dalton Dalton Schultz. Yeah. Uh, they kept Demarcus Lawrence. They were hoping to keep Randy Gregory, but he turned around and saw him for Denver, of course. Uh, linebacker Leighton Vanderesh. He was a good piece to keep. 
He's a good rotational like guard for them. I like him, yeah. yeah. Uh, notable losses. Amari Cooper, the trade with Cleveland, we've been over that. Uh, Cedric Wilson, he's gone to Miami. I think that was a great signing. If he's going to be your number three receiver. Or four. Fantastic. Or four, exactly. Four. Yeah. Or four. And uh, the last Randy Gregory, of course. So, moving on to Philly, who really didn't do much of anything. They signed uh, Zach Pascal, wide receiver from Indy. He was okay. I mean, he was on waiver wire for every single week of the season in uh, fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> floating around. He had a couple good games, but, you know, nothing crazy. Signed so linebacker uh, Hassan Reddick. He's a good piece, good piece to fill in there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, no, er, they re signed Fletcher Cox and Jason Kelsey. Um, uh, you know, they had a good defense last year. The Fletcher Cox move was interesting because they cut him. They cut him and re signed him. They cut him and then re signed him. So I guess it was a money thing. Uh, they just straight up released him and seemed he was going to sign elsewhere. There's even teams interested in him, I believe. And, mm-hmm. uh, he just randomly re-signed to Philly, so I thought that was right a very on. bizarre move. I like I said, it had to be money related. Uh, besides that, Keep yeah, the contract down. And something. Kelsey too. Kelsey was like borderline retired and came back. And yeah, he's a solid I mean, piece, man. I yeah. mean, very. Uh, I mean, he's, veteran center. he's been a staple for them. He's been there his whole career, I believe. Yeah. So uh, yeah, no, it's uh, nice yeah. seeing him there. And notable loss, Jordan Howard. I mean, he was a good number two, number three back for them. They're certainly in contention to win win that division for sure. Yeah. Um, the Washington Commanders, they got Carson Wentz, obviously, in the trade with Indianapolis. And they've re-signed running back J.T. McKissick, who was, you know, a great pass-catching back. Third down, long, good to have out there, you know? Yeah. He's going to catch everything that's thrown to he's him. The, um, he's the secondary back with uh, Gibson there, so, I yes. mean, that's really a debt piece for them. Yeah. He was seven, seven million over two years. Great contract for what he's going to give you. Yeah. Notable losses. Uh, tight end Ricky Seals Jones. That I don't know how they're going to replace him. Uh, <laughs> safety Landon Collins and wide receiver Adam Humphreys. I like Landon Collins. So uh, yeah, that's a that's a unfortunate piece. Yeah. Um. So not much to mention there, and really not a hell of a lot to mention here with the Giants. They signed. Uh, quarterback Tyrod Taylor to 11 years or 11 years <laughs> like the Jesus uh, 11 million over two years that's just in case Daniel Jones is a yeah. is an idiot again this year which I'm I'm confident in or saying, again well, another one of those guys who gets like hurt all the time I yes. mean the guy has a concussion every time he trips on the turf and injures yeah. himself he's a so, silly boy <laughs> uh, they're the ones who got Ricky Seals Jones which is all right. Yeah. To replace Evan Ingram, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, O-line, Mark Glowinski, former Indianapolis Colt. He's a pretty good offensive lineman. Notable losses, Evan Ingram, the tight end. Safety, Jabril Peppers. And corner, Logan Ron. I want to mention that, too. Uh, Jabril Peppers went to New England today. Oh, did he He's, today? He signed okay. New England today. Um, again, safety. Uh, Sorry. Love the move. Yep. Um, I think he's, he's young. He's like 26, 27. Uh, the Patriots needed to get younger and better on defense, and they did. So uh, nice. I, I wanted to mention that. Uh, I actually forgot about it, and I'm glad you brought that up. Um, that's it for the NFC East. Not a hell of a lot in that division going on. Everyone's pretty pretty conservative this year, besides Dallas making a couple moves. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the same here with the South. Uh, the North, sorry. Uh, I already looked at the South. Uh, looking at Chicago first. Um, they got Simeon from the Saints. Uh, they brought in a couple of receivers, uh, kind of like these moves because they weren't costly at all and uh, give uh, Justin Fields some weapons. Uh, they landed Pringle from uh, the Chiefs, and I'm not even going to try to butcher his first name, but the Equinemius or whatever St. Brown. Equinemius. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, was, I was close I'm going to get. Uh, St. Brown, one-year deal only, so they're not, um, same thing with Pringle, it's only one year, cheap, $4 million, so they're not uh, committing to these guys, but couple extra pieces for uh, Justin Fields. Uh, departures, uh, lost a couple of running backs, uh, Tariq Cohen and Damian Williams. Uh, the biggest piece, uh, probably the hottest free agent receiver, uh, Allen Robinson to the Rams. Uh, they lost Goodwin, who was a receiver for the 49ers beforehand. Uh, Demir Bird, who was with the Patriots in 2021. 
or 2020, uh, sorry, and uh, Grant, uh, who went to the Browns. Uh, they lost Jimmy Graham and Jesse James, both uh, household name tight ends. That's yep. kind of bounced around now the past couple of years. Middle tier guys. Uh, defensive lineman Akeem H- uh, Hicks, uh, pretty pretty big guy, very stout run uh, run, de- son, run, run defender. Uh, no, no, no I, be- I believe he's still out there. Yeah, uh, like I said, he can certainly come back. Uh, of course, the big Khalil Mack trade to the Chargers, a huge piece of their defense. Yeah. Uh, a couple of veteran linebackers, Bruce Irvin and Danny Trevathan. Um, both, you know, four or five years ago, really good. Bruce Irvin was on the Legion of Boom. And uh, Danny Trevathan was part of those Denver uh, 2015 teams. Uh, and then veteran cornerback Artie Burns uh, signed with the Seahawks. So that was it for them. So they lost more than they gained uh, when it looked like they had an opportunity to make a run at the division if Rodgers had left. Uh, not a lot of moves with them, so I was a little bit disappointed in what they did. Uh, so moving on to Detroit, who had very little action themselves. Uh, they got DJ Chark uh, for one year, $10 million. Wide receiver Josh Reynolds, uh, who's already with the team, they re-signed two years, 12. Uh, a couple of veteran linebackers, Anzalone and Jared Davis, uh, one year and terms unknown. And they lost li- linebacker Trey Flowers. Uh, he's still out there on sign. Another good proven pass rusher that uh, yeah. used to be in New England, as we know. So uh, he's a good piece. Uh, moving on to the Packers, of course. Uh, Aaron Rodgers came back initially, reported a four year, $200 million, uh, which was, I believe happened before. Did it happen before our last podcast? So we were saying uh, that. Four years, $200 million. But, anyways, it came out uh, it was three years, 150.8. Yeah. So a uh, little bit more guaranteed money, I believe, involved with that, but uh, less term. I'm sure there's some player options in there with him, too, with how disgruntled he's been. Yeah. <laughs> um, of course, with them trading uh, Devontae Adams and uh, St. Brown and Scantling, and they lost a lot, of, a lot of receivers, not just Adams. So Wouldn't you be absolutely pissed if you were Green Bay and you looked and you were like, ha, ha. We got a steal, buddy, a first and a second for uh, Devontae Adams. Mm-hmm. And you look over. And Kansas City's there. <laughs> Tyree Hill goes yeah. for a shit dump. Yeah. It's, and it's like, oh, we are idiots. Well, it just it just sucks because, like, like Kansas City set themselves up. Like, they had signed Juju before they did this. Like, Scantling was still available. Like, who? There's not, well, there's still some receivers left, I guess, if they want to bring some in. Uh, but they lost three. They lost three of them. Like, Kansas City was only loot. They lost one to bring in three pieces. <laughs> like... Green Bay lost three to bring in nobody. <laughs> like the only receiver that they have, they is, basically have to draft they, both in the first they, round. They have to, and they've never drafted a first round receiver. Like that's they're notorious for not drafting receivers. Like that's like yeah. I thing. did hear Lafleur say we have to address that. Right? They have to. They I, have to I, absolutely have to. And if they and, want to contain, and they can also trade. Like I'm sure you can get a really good receiver for a first round. If you can get Shaq Mason for a fifth, fifth round pick, you can get a like they can make a move. Like yeah. I know them and Kansas City have certainly inquired about. Metcalf and Lockett yeah. from Seattle. Of course, we'll get to Seattle and their mess too. But uh, yeah, it looks like if they want to sell all assets and rebuild, they're the right team to reach out to. Yeah, that's right. Um, so they re-signed uh, their tight end Robert Tunyon, who was pretty good, uh, pretty good fantasy player. So he put up a lot of touchdowns. Uh, not a whole lot besides that. Also coming off an ACL injury, so he's probably one of their most like tenured players now and most reliable players. And he's coming off an ACL, and he's a big slow tight end. Like he's. Mm-hmm. Not a whole lot going for them. You can run blocker. You can run the same route. I mean, so once they saved a bit of money uh, with uh, Devontae Adams' deal, they re-signed Devondre Campbell, linebacker, five-year, fifty million. And they originally let go Preston Smith, and then changed their mind. He came back for a four-year extension, uh, which is up to five-year total now, including the year he had left for sixty-five million. Uh, so a lot of money there, and then uh, they re-signed Rasul Douglas to three-year, twenty-one million. So shored up some key pieces on their defense at least. Uh, on paper, right now they're not going to score a ton of people, so definitely some good moves to get back their defense. Yeah. Uh, in terms of who they lost, on top of the receivers, uh, uh, veteran pass rusher Whitney Merciless, and the the other Smith brother uh, linebacker Zadarius Smith, who went to their division rival the Vikings, uh, and also cornerback Kevin King, who was the guy who Scotty Miller burnt in the NFC Championship game, so probably not a big loss there. (laughs) Um, Now, looking at those Vikings, uh, as mentioned, they signed linebacker Zedaria Smith, three years, $42 million, after he left the Packers. Yep, good contract for them. Uh, Defensive lineman Harrison Phillips, I believe he came from the Dolphins. 
uh, three year 19.5 and they extended Kirk Cousins for an extra year for 35 million extension through 2023 um, interesting move again with Green Bay probably contending again now for the next couple of years with Rodgers there and uh, depending on what else they do uh, so the Vikings are probably <laughs> just going to continue waiting until Aaron Rodgers goes away Yep. Uh, until they really make a push uh, but some key pieces for them and then they lost a couple veterans, uh, tight end Todd Conklin, uh, defensive end Everson Griffin, defensive tackle Sheldon Richardson. Good player, really like him. He's still available. Uh, linebacker Anthony Barry, starting to start age a little bit. Uh, safety Xavier Woods went to the Panthers, and cornerback Mackenzie Alexander, who is also still available, I believe. So that's it for me for the North. So now we'll turn it over to the last division now, the NFC West, to wrap it up. So I'll start with the brands here. Um, really not a hell of a lot of ads for them. Uh, wide receiver Allen Robinson on a $46.5 million over three-year contract. Good for number two, yep. like we mentioned Again, earlier. one of those deals, too, if it pans out, the money's pretty good. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know what to expect from him at all. You know, he was good in Jacksonville, had some great years. Then he went to Chicago, and it's just been shit-hitting fan every year. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, you know, I'm not sure what he's gonna what he's gonna bring to the table. But uh, they re-signed Joe Nopum, offensive tackle, and center Brian Allen. So that runs out their ads or re-ads, I guess. Um, their notable losses: uh, Robert Woods traded to Tennessee, the mind-boggling there. And the fact that he could be back for the start of the season or October, November, it's to me it doesn't make any sense. I don't sense. think it's as mind boggling if Odell comes back. Yeah. Which I thought was just a you know a, I thought it was just waiting just gonna happen at any moment. Yeah. Uh, it seems more likely than not he's not at this point, yeah. I'd say. So they lost Von Miller, uh, to the Bills, obviously. Uh, corner Darius Williams, one of their top corners behind Jalen Ramsey. Yeah. Uh, offensive tackle Andrew Whitworth retired. That's a hole they got to fill. Uh, and potential losses, they are free agents right now. Odell Beckham Jr. and running back Sony Michelle. You know, we'll uh, we'll see if they sign back Michelle. I can't see it with the amount of running backs. I don't know. Nah, Daryl so. Henderson and Cam Akers. That's your two solid main. So that's the back I can see Sony with Tampa, to be honest with you. Yep. Sony, Sony, Familiar with Brady. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right, moving on to Arizona, who I think may have had the worst off season this entire off season. I, I just think it was absolutely mind boggling. They re-signed James Conner, uh, running back for twenty one million a year, three years. Great, but he's a number two back, goal line back. He can't run you. You know, get you 15 yards on first and second down. Uh, very limited. Uh, tight end Zach Ertz re-signed for 10 million a year over three years. And the notable losses: running back Chase Edmonds, gone. Wide receiver Christian Kirk, gone. Uh, AJ Green, he's on the free agent list and he's probably gone. Just two, three offensive weapons. I, I actually see AJ Green going back. You think so? Just because I don't think it's a huge mar- yeah, market yeah, for him. Yeah. I mean, I like I, I, I could be wrong, but and the last uh, defensive lineman, Jordan Phillips, linebacker Chan- Chandler Jones, edge rusher, whatever you want to call him. It's a big loss. And corner Malcolm Butler. So they lost all these big pieces, and they added nobody. Nobody. No. And in the off season, Kyler Murray disgruntled as shit. Constantly complaining, uh, unfollowing them on Instagram, and just not satisfied. And I wouldn't be satisfied after this either. You're a playoff team. You figure you got to contend with Sam Fran not knowing what to do in that quarterback. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, this might be our moment to get into the playoffs, sneak in, and make a push, right? No, nope. they lost all these pieces in time. Really. So, moving on to the 49ers, as mentioned, uh, they had a corner, Chavarius Ward. 40.5. That was the guy off the Chiefs, the yeah. cornerback ward I was talking about. Yeah, so he, he's a good pickup for them. Yeah. Um, I mean, he was he was burnt toast in Kansas City, but yeah. he was he was a starter. Yeah. Uh, they signed him to replace Kwan Williams. It's a pretty good upgrade. Mm-hmm. Uh, they re-signed Jordan Willis, defensive lineman, cornerback Dante Johnson, 
and running back Jeff Wilson. He'll be there for a long ass time. You know, he's a number three back yeah. or something. Mm-hmm. But now with Mozart gone, they'll move to number two. Get more chances there. Like I said, Mozart's gone, the running back, and wide receiver Richie James Jr. is gone. So, not a very eventful offseason for them either. And uh, to wrap this segment up, we got the Seattle Seahawks. We've got Drew Locke, quarterback from uh, the Broncos, to trade for Russell Wilson. Tight end Noah Fan, defensive tackle Shelby Harris. Three good pickups for them, but when yeah. you lose Russell Wilson, you're, you're basically tanking for the next five years. Like, like I mentioned earlier, it could be potentially a fire sale soon with yeah. a lot of those other guys who are there that um, – you know, can retain any kind of, you know, uh, compensation in terms of draft capital. Um, again, not a not a huge draft class this year of talent. Uh, next year, I think, is like to say, again, uh, it's, it depends what you're looking for. Of course, they're in the quarterback market. I think next year's quarterback class is strong. Next year, there's five that should go. On Spec the Seattle to be in the bottom five picks this year. I don't, I don't see them doing a whole lot at all. Yeah. And, and as for signings, they re-signed Rashad Benny, the running back. Linebacker, I don't know how to say this name. You Chenna will sue. That's my best guess. Sorry if I butchered the blood. Hopefully you're listening. Uh, corner, Quandre Diggs, $40 million over three years. He's going to die there. There's not going to be much there for him. No. He's just going to get his head beat in for nothing. Well, again, luckily it's not it's not super long term. Yeah, like true. like like the three year contract seems to be more standard than what I remember in past years. Like not not so many long contracts. Notable losses, of course, Russell Wilson, offense tackle Dwayne Brown. That was uh, was a bad move. I mean, he's probably commanded a lot of money. But yeah, I liked him. I think they brought him in from uh, Houston previously, and uh, he uh, he was a big trade for them a couple of years ago. Because remember their offensive line, Wilson, one of the great runs. He place. was upset. Yeah. And they could lose Bobby Wagner. I mean, I can't see him going I think back he's gone. with they, the situation. They right. caught him, right? So, I mean, yeah. unless it's the Fletcher Cox thing and he comes back. I mean, he he's pissed about it, too, as far as I'm seeing. So, yeah. I mean, I fully imagine he's he's going to go. Um, we have a little uh, segment coming up now where we'll look at who's who's remaining and where they're going. Uh, he's a high one on my list. I, so, I like, I'd like to see him go a couple places. Yeah. And finally, the last corner, DJ Reed. Uh, not much to uh, get excited about here in Seattle. If you're a Seattle fan, well, you know, put your jersey in the closet for the next five years. Yeah, yeah. See, <laughs> well, especially like like we said, what a dog fight the NFC West is. Even if they had a, a pretty tangible roster, like it's not easy to win it. I mean, like like you're looking at those teams like the 49ers and Cardinals, and they're fighting their ass off for 11 wins just to get, you know, the sixth seed, mm. you know, at that point, third place, you know. And, I mean, at least they got two layups in Seattle now yeah. probably in the next upcoming year. So. That's true. So now we'll move on to um, the top five winners of free agency. Shane's going to take us through this one. This is mainly uh, teams that took a step forward from last year. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, there was – first off, uh, before I get into – like who I had as winners. Um, I'll do honorable mentions. Um, I like the Rams and the Bengals um, because I think they addressed key areas. Um, I think the Rams had, you know, a lot more to go that they definitely have pieces to fill, but the pieces that, like, they're concerned at. Like, Allen Robinson is, is a good piece for them. Uh, they still have a lot of their core in place. Losing Von Miller sucks, but it's definitely something. Their bucket was over. It's silly. Them. It's silly to think that they're not going to make moves throughout the season. They're going to be active at the trade deadline again. Although they're not heavy in the draft, they're they're going to be a place that's going to draw attention. There's still some talented names out there. I'm not shocked if a, Ty- a Tyron Matthew goes there or another superstar. If they can make room for for the money to work, because that's probably their biggest issue right now. I'm they're hearing cer- Bobby Wagner. They're certainly not trading any other people. Yeah. I mean, they got no other picks. I mean, it's hard to do. But like I said, when you get into next season and then you're you're into that season, you can trade next year's. Yeah. And then you're kind of re re into it. So I expect them to make moves in the trade deadline. If if not, um, whatever they can sign from here on out. So I do like yeah. them, and of course the Bengals. Their biggest hole by far was the offensive line. They by far and away addressed that. Love what they did. Um, my only concern with them that I didn't put them in the top five was the tight end. Uh, they definitely lost a good one. They didn't really do a whole lot to address it. 
I'm hoping, like say this is for now, if they draft a good one in, in, in the draft or there's another signing I'm unaware of right now, um, by all means, I'll be happy to move well, them up. Their offense is very young, and to get a young tight end and to grow with that team, they're 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 certainly like the building blocks are there, and they're for the next 10 they're going to be looking up. Uh, yeah. There's certainly a big piece was this year. Maybe they're not right there to get over the hump <laughs> like we're this year. A bit of a uh, c- uh, Cinderella story uh, leading up this year. So we'll see if they can get back to that. Um, but I definitely like what they did for sure. Yeah, um, and and an honorable mention that. Oh, it was tough. It was tough to leave them out, but uh, I have Buffalo. Uh, Buffalo is an honorable mention. It's tough not to have them in the top five. I wanted to squeeze them in there, but there's there's just so much action in other places. Uh, I kind of had to give them a bit of the rub right now, but uh, Buffalo certainly looks like with a good draft. Maybe bring in another piece or two. Yeah, they'll certainly be there. But I like what they did. Uh, okay, so moving on to who I have for top five. Number five, I had the Raiders. Um, they had they made a lot of moves. Uh, obviously, like again, a lot of these top five is going to be again those sexy teams. Do I think they're going to win the Super Bowl? No, not necessarily. But as of right now, what they did in the off season, they've won the off season. You know that always doesn't mean everything, but the Raiders did what they had to do. A lot of moves. Um, they're looking to extend Car now potentially. That might create more cast base and might get more people. Like I said, they. Don't have a whole lot of early draft picks, but they still do have some draft capital to bring it in. Um, they've a little bit worried about their defense still. Hasn't really been great the past couple years, but they certainly have the offense to compete with anybody in the AFC West. Yeah. Uh, so I like what they did. Well, the, adi- the addition of Chandler Jones to match with Max Crosby's huge. Uh, so number four, I had Miami. Uh, very similar reason. I, I can't move them up any higher than this because I, I said it a couple times. I think they are the sexy team that's going to do nothing. Um, I think they have a lot of great names on paper. I don't think that they are going to quite get where they need to get. I think they have a bit of a tough, well, they have a tough division, but I I think they've certainly taken the number two reign right now from New England. Okay. But obviously, when you look at true contenders in, in the AFC, Buffalo's right at the very top, tough to contend with. So with Miami, the best you're looking at is a wild card, in my opinion. So tough to, put, tough to put them really, really up high on what they've done. They, they did what they had to do to make themselves a, a, a contender for a wild card. Not really a contender in my eyes in terms of the AFC. So. you got to get the quarterback. Yes, to, to get but I absolutely like, like what they did. They, they went from a non-playoff team to a playoff team, so i got to give them number four. Uh, number three for me is the Broncos. Um, I really like what they did. I really like that they put themselves in – in position to make that move. I think a lot of people are looking at them like I look at Miami. Maybe they're not going to have all the pieces to put it together. I think they will. I fully expect them to be a wild card team. Um, I think that the AFC West is going to be very hard to win games. But I think with them being a lower tier team the past couple years, their schedule is a bit easier. Uh, besides the teams in their division, they're looking pretty good. Um they do play the uh, NFC West, I believe. So they do have some hard matchups coming up. But uh, overall, I mean, the quarterback obviously is the biggest piece. Uh, theirs is bigger than Raiders, so I'll put them a little bit ahead. Um, I like their receiving core. I like their defense. Not much about that team I don't like right now, so I'll give them no- number three. Uh, number two, I will go with the Bucks. I mean, they're just – they're quite simply the most – Probably the most well-rounded team in the NFL, uh, yes. certainly in the NFC. Yes. Uh, if you look at the subtractions from the Packers, the subtractions from the Rams, the inactivity of Dallas, um, the activity from, from them, bringing them in, San Francisco, what are they even doing at quarterback? There's certainly questions on almost every team. Um, <coughs> they have their full slate of draft picks. They will have a first, second, third to do whatever they want. I don't think Brady's done bringing people in. Um, they've got depth. They, Julio is certainly an option. Their their defense, if anything, to question about the team is certainly still have some question marks. Uh, the depth is a little bit worse than last year, but again, we still got free agency is not quite over in the draft to come, so I'm not going to rule them out completely. Uh, really like what they've done. I think they're the best team in the NFC on paper right now. If they stay healthy, they'll be on it. Absolutely. Uh, so the number one winner for me is a team that I think is going to be a very, very big surprise this year. Uh, I have the Chargers. I think they've they've won the off season to this point. Uh, I really like what they did. Uh, J.C. Jackson, obviously a stud. Um, I thought he was going to be something New England wanted to hold on to. They didn't. The Chargers wasted absolutely no time picking him up. If he pans out, that's great. 
Obviously, they have the team in place to really contend. I think they're ahead of the Raiders. I think they're ahead of Miami. I think they're ahead of Denver, so I'll put them up ahead. Uh, I think they're lockstep. They've really given Kansas City fits the past couple years. I don't see that being any different with Kansas City taking potentially a step back, then taking a step up. I think they have every reason to believe that they can win that division and be contending for the AFC this year. So as of right now, the Chargers are certainly one of the better teams uh, this offseason. I'd give them the number one, number one spot. So my top five, my top six, you all mentioned, right? Mm-hmm. Um, two that you didn't have was, as for the offensive side of the ball for Kansas City, I got them just because of the cat space they did free up yeah. and the pieces they did add with the Tyreek money. And they, they did with Tyron Matthew, same thing. Uh, I got them coming to the head, taking a little step forward. Now it's a it's a microscopic step forward, right? You know, with all the draft picks and everything. As for this season, well, you know, yeah, it's probably a window. But as for two to three seasons down the road, I think I think they took a step forward. Yeah, with it, son, so, to a massive deal. So, like when I say the Chargers or Bucks or something, I'm looking at 2022. But yeah. you're you're looking at as a franchise. Just for an honorable mention, we've gotten better. Yeah, I thought it was a great move. Yeah, okay. Uh, and end it. I think Indy, Indy took a huge step forward. They actually have a quarterback. Yeah. And you know what? Matt Ryan, in the last five years, has the most passing yards in the entire league. Wow. <laughs> That is a wild set. Which doesn't always lead to wins. Because, I mean... No, but he's had shit team. Deshaun Watson led the league the last time he was playing there, 4-12. and So, like, yeah. you know, it doesn't always conduce to wins. But I do think... They got a solid roster. But with that said, I think he'll throw for less yards this year and win a ton more games. Yes. So, uh, you know, that's he's not out looking for any yardage, you know, records yeah. or anything right now. He certainly wants to win. So, between adding him and uh, Yannick Ngakwe... Yep. Uh, I think they took a massive step forward. Yeah, uh, they're gonna be they're gonna be right there battling Tennessee for the division lead, in my opinion. Oh, absolutely. So that sums up the top five winners. Top five, we went as deep as probably ten teams. <laughs> but uh, as for the top five losers of free agency, I'll start with one that I don't think anybody is gonna agree with me here. But the Cleveland Browns, looking ahead just for this season alone, I think they took took a step back. Baker's going to be gone. They lost Jarvis Landry and, of course, Odell last season. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, <clears throat> they got Deshaun Watson. But I can see him being suspended for potentially six to ten games. Could be the whole next season. Like yeah. we, we have no idea. So their first half, at least, of the season is going to be a point now. Right, and then, then you're hoping on uh, Jacoby Brissett to, I mean, like, can he even get him to 3-3? Three and three? Exactly. You know, and, and, and in as competitive as the AFC is, this year is almost a wash, even if he's suspended six games. Yeah. They added Amari Cooper, who I think is a number two, certainly over the last few years. Mm-hmm. You know, he's had his number one time, and he's been okay, but he's never really changed his life anywhere. You know what I mean? And... Uh, the fact that they're riding on him only now, and Don Peoples Jones is the number two, it's a very questionable. There's going to be heavy in the run game, of course, but mm-hmm. for me, they're on the list. Uh, Dallas Cowboys losing Amari Cooper, losing Cedric Wilson, and keeping uh, Michael Gallup to to a team friendly contract, but to have him as number two is to me is questionable. And the fact is. C.D. Lamb ready to be the number one? Who knows? He's certainly got the capability, but he's got a case of drops every year. Right. So, to me, they're on the list. They also lost Randy Gregory to a contract kind of dispute kind of deal. Um, I'm just going to go straight up to number one. Uh, the Arizona Cardinals. <laughs> just the offseason has just been a torture for them. Between Kyler Murray, you know, shitting all over him apparently coming to terms with that and you know I'm back with the team I'm team guy or whatever that just you know that just kind of threw a wrench into it almost seems like an immaturity really yeah, like, it's, like, it's like it's like the 
the young person in them that's coming out you know like it's and and i don't know like i feel like that's what that's where you want to have a really really experienced coach or a really really like those experienced guys on a team that's gonna like Com- it's a calming presence right? like 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 would you see somebody on a team like a ray lewis or something getting on with this like no. like no or or like I said on the coaching side mike tomlin or or belichick or somebody along those lines who had who has that like come to jesus moment like talk to me what's going on and then you know, really like hash out what's going on now yeah. if it's settled it's settled right now but like I said when it comes down to it it's probably money yeah um number two I get the Patriots. As much as I don't want to, you know, don't want to say it, it's it's the case. The Pets really haven't made any notable signings or trades this offseason. And to me, fell behind Miami and Buffalo significantly in the division. You know, I can see 8 and 9, 7 and 10. Mm-hmm. Just, uh, yeah. just a bad season for us Pets fans. Um, you know, they got rid of a lot of the core pieces, Jason Jackson, Jack Mason. You know, it, it, to me, it just nothing makes sense, right? Unless Bill's got some guard up his sleeve to jump Miami again. I, I, don't, I can't see it. Uh, number three, Green Bay. Losing Devontae Adams and Zary Smith. It really hurts them. They need to have a strong draft class to climb out of this top yeah. five losers. They need to draft wide receivers. Maybe a linebacker. Something's really got to change with them. And one that I think a lot of people have as a winner in this offseason, I get the Jags at four. They spent a shit ton of money. Yeah. And they got no no substance, no players of any substance. Yeah. Christian Kirk is your number one, but he's normally a number two, number three receiver, and you paid him so much money. They got Zay Jones, which... It's not gonna not gonna change life in Jacksonville or make Trevor Lawrence's life easier. And you got Evan Ingram, who's getting up there in age from the Giants. He really hasn't had any success anywhere. So to me, yes, they improved their offensive line a little bit, but you know they're you know they're still nowhere close to contending for a wild card in the AFC. To me, they're a bottom five in the conference. I mean, I think they'll be there. They'll be in it. I think you definitely need like there's like all of these scenarios are not going to work out, right? No. Like 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 Miami is not going to work perfectly and be a wild card, and Denver work out perfectly, and the Chargers work out perfectly, and like mm-hmm. like all these teams in Indy, and like all these teams that are on the fringe last year, like like and if it's indie then you got tennessee like there's a lot of teams that are on like some of these teams and and how many like one of them is going to get like that's the thing with new england is like they're a well-oiled machine like is there one player besides maybe mac jones who will go down where you're like their season's over Mm. not really but there's like if you look at denver yes if you look at the chargers probably yes if you look at miami absolutely Mm. i don't think they have though you can say they're almost not ready now like, if yeah. there's injuries, if there's still COVID, you know, hopefully not. But, like, if there's something going on that will influence these teams to not be healthy at the right time, because that's really what happened with New England this year. Like, they played Tennessee when Tennessee was weak. Mm-hmm. They played Cleveland when Cleveland was really weak. Cleveland ended up being really weak anyways. But it was like, yeah. you know. Half reason was Baker was just beat up. Well, like, preseason, a lot of people had Cleveland being a force last year. So, like, like we thought of that. Like, they blew them out. It was like 45-7. Like, they yeah. killed them. Yeah. Uh, like they played the Jags, they played the Jets twice. Like they played a lot of a lot of weak teams, so they got you know, they helped by that. But when it comes down to it, I think like if they are in that range, like the ten and seven, nine and eight, like you know they'll be they'll be there mm-hmm. for sure to to be fighting for Walker. I probably leave them on the outside looking in as of right now, but uh, sir, I, I still would have them going like six and eleven. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're you're a bit more down on than I yeah. am a little bit. Yeah. yeah. E- they got the running back coming back, yeah. ETN, or mm-hmm. and who's the other running back they got? Um, young fella as well. Um, he replaced Fournette. Mm. Either way, I don't think he changed his life, but we will see. And my last one on this list is the Rams. They lost Robert Woods, OBJ, potentially Von Miller, a corner, you know. Uh, to me, they haven't made enough 
of a push to make up for that. Mm -hmm. You know, because they weren't a dominating team last year. Defensively, yes, but uh, there were a lot of close games where, like, first half of the Super Bowl, OBJ goes off yeah. for a shit ton with a touchdown. And if they never had him in the first half, what, what would have happened, you know? Well, I mean, obviously, when he went out, they fell apart, really. Until that last draw, Cooper Cup took over. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's all for me. Um, you got any additions to the list? Yeah, I actually, I actually had, um, had, a, had a lot. I did have Cleveland. Uh, on my list, I uh, had Dallas. Um, I'm looking at those teams too that like we didn't necessarily. It depends how you look at this too. Like they weren't necessarily looking to rebuild, or I didn't think they were looking to rebuild this quick. Like your Seattle's, like your Atlanta, but you could look at it positively. Like okay, let's just get it over. Let's rip the bandaid off because if you exactly. keep if you keep Wilson, if you keep Matt Ryan. And you keep going seven and ten every year. Delaying, yeah. Does it, yeah? Does it really help? So like, yes, they're really tanking. Or I hate using the word tank because like I hate saying teams are doing it on purpose. But they're starting starting the rebuild now. Yeah. Maybe it's not the worst thing to do that. But technically, they've lost. They've lost a lot of people. They're going to lose a lot of games. I'll consider it a loser. So to them, uh, I did have the Pats as a mention. I didn't have them full on my five, but uh, I did have them as a mention for inactivity. A uh, couple teams that uh, you didn't mention, uh, Pittsburgh. I thought they would do a lot more. I uh, expected more out of them with their a team that made the playoffs. So like, like you look at the teams like New England, I can't quite put them there, although they were they were in the playoffs as well. But I did have less expectation this year than I think I did for uh, for Pittsburgh just because I think they got more in place. Hmm. Uh, they're really just quarterback away, maybe a couple of offensive pieces. If Cleveland – Cuts Baker Mayfield. Yeah. I can see Mayfield going to Pittsburgh. Being in on them, yeah. With Trubisky sure. and his team-friendly contract. You know? uh, and probably the team I'd have as my number one that I'm just disappointed in is Baltimore. Like, I just – I really think that if they made a couple, like, like Buffalo-type moves, they would really be a top two, three contender for the AFC total, let alone yeah. – their own division, like I think they with a couple big moves, I think they'd be probably ahead of Cincinnati at least enough in the conversation. Like you're really up there with the Buffaloes and Kansas Cities and the teams that have been there the past couple years, and they really did nothing. And I'm really disappointed. And like they literally signed two people with one of them being a fullback. Like it's just awful. To me, they can only like it. This offseason was just a neutral, neutral thing for them. Right. They didn't take a step back, nor did they take a step forward. But if anything, with all the injuries and everybody coming back healthy, they'll take a step forward. Mm -hmm. They won't be fourth in their division, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's it's certainly a thing to look at with them. Uh, like, I, I do, because of the inactivity, have them on the lower end of, 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 like, of course, with the AFC. Like, if you don't have a quarterback, you're poor. Yeah. So I mean, at at this point, are are you are you gonna take the Atlanta Seattle approach because they do have that core in place. Atlanta and Seattle really don't like they do have some pieces, of course. Like you don't want to waste Metcalf or Pitts or anything like that either. But like I feel like Pittsburgh has more of those like like those generational like Metcalf's not gonna make or break your team. He's a huge great piece to have. He's not like I feel like T.J. Watt can be. Yes. Right? And you don't want to waste that guy's prime. And I really think they could have kept Juju if they had a quarterback and all that. So, like, if you had the pieces there to really drop Najee Harris. Najee Harris, yeah, he's only going into his second year. Like, like there's some pieces in place. Like, oh, you really – if 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 they got Matt Ryan, for instance, I think you're like, okay, like, they're almost in the same boat as Indy, really. So, I mean, I'm really disappointed with them, really disappointed with Baltimore. Um, like I said, a couple of those teams in the AFC that could have made a push that – I still expect to be, you know, competitive. Like, we'll see what Pittsburgh does with the draft. Uh, are they going to go with Trubisky? Are they going to draft a quarterback? Like I said, the quarterback class isn't super, super strong. Do you want to dive in on one now? They're one of the couple, couple quiet teams that probably are in the quarterback market long term. But like I said, do you trust the guys that are there this year? I guess we'll see. Um, yeah, like I said, I had Packers, uh, as I mentioned, Dallas, Arizona, yeah, that was it for me. I did have Kansas City as a mention in terms of this year. Yes, but like I said, long term, if you're looking at 2022, Kansas City. If you're not as yeah. as a franchise, I like what they did. Yeah. So moving on to our remaining notable free agents. 
We each did a top 10, 15 list, I guess. Yeah, I think I got uh, I got about 12 or so there. Yeah, I got 11. Just a player, just a player and a fit. We'll run through this quick because I know we're, we're hitting at two hours right now. So let's uh, let's run down through these quick. I'll, uh, I'll start with, uh, I'll probably do the first five I had there, and I was going off the top 100 list that they had there. Uh, top one, Tyron Matthew. I'd love to see him go here. Buffalo. I think it would be a great fit there. Uh, the defense, like I said, they're really getting in place with Von Miller. Like, if you put him there to go against these top quarterbacks in the AFC, I think really, really puts them a notch above yes. everybody, and and every, everybody else. doesn't have to be a super long contract. Two years, $22 million, something along those, 10, 10 $11 million a year. P- put him in there. Like, he's only going to be good for another two, three years anyways, I think. Get get that prime right out of him. Man, they already have the top pass defense in the league. Yeah. You add him, you add Von Miller. It's like yeah, I really, I really, be better than top one. I really think they would put him. That would put them right at the cream of the crop of the AFC and really a step above everybody else. Uh, Odell Beckham. I mean, just a no-brainer. Green Bay. They just, they just need people. Like they, they, they need able bodies that'll come in. And the only, the only thing I think would scare them off is you got Tony coming back, able body. I said, and that, that's exactly it. You got Tony coming back off the same injury. You don't want too many guys coming off injuries like that. You know, you're really gambling your uh, your season on on these guys coming back healthy. Uh, Steph Gilmore, bring him back to New England. They need corners. I mean, it's a, it's a, like again, uh, Belichick likes to do that. Bring like let let a guy go, experience like other other places. And then come back to the system. Come back home. Come back home. <laughs> Bring him back. He knows the system. Instant number one guy that's there. Fill, fills a need. Uh, you know, he might take less money. He might not. New England hasn't spent a whole lot of money anyways. They could probably get it done. Uh, Bobby Wagner. Dallas. Dallas needs to make a move. They really need, uh, like, somebody, a stopgap on defense. They um, signed Fowler up. You know, maybe that and and they, and, and, and they did keep Van Der Esch too, so I'm not saying linebacker is necessarily a really really heavy need for them, but it is something uh, that they can do to it's a splash move, make right? a splash, and, and that's what Dallas does. Dallas might you know hire the or hire the uh, sign sign the the big name rather than the people they need. Yes. So this is a Dallas move, if anything. I'm yeah. not saying it'll put them over the top, but it is a Dallas move. Yeah. Uh, Jadavian Clowney. Uh, I see him going to Baltimore. Uh, I think this is a, a team that hasn't really done anything. Uh, I think, again, to counteract these quarterbacks in the AFC, I think I think you need those pass rushing guys. I think Baltimore's one of the really only teams that didn't stock up on pass rushers. They're a team that definitely needs uh, needs a guy like him. Uh, I think that they can go back to Cleveland. They can certainly do that. Um, just a couple. Uh, Kind of group them all in one. Gronk, Tampa. I mean, I think that's a no-brainer. Yeah. Uh, I see Calais Campbell and Justin Houston as an edge player that can come in to Tampa and be that that rotational JPP. piece because I don't think JPP is going. So you got Shaq Barrett on one side, uh, JTS, Joe Tryon, Sh- Sh- Shomika, or whatever the hell his name is from, <laughs> from last year. He's in the second year. Hasn't played a whole lot. I didn't. I wasn't blown away with his first year. Uh, he was good for a role. He was. He was good. Um, you know, he had some weakness in terms of uh, run stopping. Uh, not a whole lot of opportunities. For rushed pass. I believe he had you know four or five sacks. Nothing crazy. Um, you definitely need a third guy to to rotate in. Um, like I said, Justin Houston, a guy who's going to go get six, seven sacks. Calais Campbell, older guy. Uh, like I said, can probably sign a you know eight eight to ten year uh, eight eight to ten year eight to ten million dollar deal. Come in for one year and play it. Um, try to get a ring on the way out, and, and that's probably it. So uh, that's mostly what I've seen from the top. I got a couple more there, but I'll let you. I got uh, so Julio Jones. I can see him going to the Bucks. That would be just a phenomenal move. Maybe a five million dollar contract. Mm-hmm. Something like that, something cheap. Nah, again, yeah. like like Buffalo, I put him far and away, I think, yeah. on top. Yeah. Uh, Bobby Wagner, like you said, I can see him going to the Rams. I feel like that would be a great move. Uh, not that I want that to happen, but just what I can see happening. Uh, Jarvis Landry, I can, Cleveland, kind of at a lack of receivers right now. Kind of got to go. Uh, left tackle, Nate Solder. He, he could be a nice piece for... Maybe a Jacksonville or I didn't have that name. Somebody, you know what I mean? He's old, but he's a veteran, you know. 
no solid mainstay on the left side. Uh, Tyron Matthew, of course, be a great move to go to Buffalo. That'd be nuts. Uh, safety Landon Collins. Yeah, if a team isn't available or can't get the safety they want, and they're in an odd position in the draft where the best available player is also a team need, maybe they go ahead and get him. Uh, Stephon Gilmore, of course, like you said, pass be great. Jadavion Clowney, Cleveland. That's where I think he's going to go. Yep. A uh, couple more names here to round up my list. Trey Waynes, he's a corner. Second corner, third corner, being a nice step piece. Yeah, I, I liked him in Minnesota. Yeah. I thought he was fairly good there. Uh, Akeem Nix, defensive end. Yeah, I like him as well. And wide receiver Will Fuller. He's still on the market. You know, I, I like him. He's a burner. I, I had him going to New England. I think that's what they need. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. I think he's not necessarily the number one guy, but he's certainly a guy you can put on the outside. And okay, we got to we got to pay attention to him. And then you got you got uh, Aguilar on the other side. And then you've got Bourne, Myers playing the middle. You got Henry uh, playing the middle. I think at least put some tension to the outside. So your guys in the middle, he might not make a whole bunch of catches. He's also off the field issues, injury prone. These guys always got stuff going on. Yeah. Might not be a Belichick guy, but it's definitely someone I would like to see. So that brings it on this. Do you, do you have any more? I uh, just had just a couple uh, small ones. I think uh, Trey Flowers. Uh, I see just going to Seattle. I think he's just gonna take like a, like a big contract, uh, go somewhere else, just to kind of fill out that roster. Uh, Jarvis Landry. I like to see him in Philly. I think he would be a good piece for uh, Jalen Hurts. I think. You've got your number one guy with Devontae Smith, uh, just a depth, nice, that's what Landry is, got a complimentary second third, second, third piece. I think Philly's definitely in the running uh, to fight Dallas with Dallas's weaker offseason so far. I think a little, little move like this to put their offense a little bit over. Dallas got a big offense, you got to score with them, so I like Landry there. Uh, I like Julio Jones in Indianapolis. I think give uh, need a wide give receiver. give Matt Ryan a wide receiver. I think Julio can go there. You know he's got a bit of you know he want to get back at Tennessee a little bit, battling them. So I think uh, Julio in uh, Indianapolis would be uh, a great piece. That is and a great move. I never thought of that. Uh, another uh, piece, uh, Sue. I had retirement, retirement home. <laughs> so that's where I think he should play next year. <laughs> I, I think he should walk away. I I. Uh, I just don't think the $10 million or whatever he's going to garner is worth it for Tampa. Uh, you know, maybe he'll get signed on somewhere else. I just don't think. I think for him, it's, it's ring your boss at this point. Yeah. Uh, like, unless another contender like a Green Bay or somebody wants to offer him something. Again, I don't see that out of them either. Mm-hmm. Uh, just think it's a they waste of money. make big moves like that. You know no, no. Probably not. No, I don't see a splash move. Like I said, I, I, maybe at Kansas City. I don't know. I doubt it. Uh, although I think he would fit there a little bit too. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah, but that was uh, that was my list. Like I'm sure there's a couple. Like I said, you had on your list. I didn't have. So there's still there's still plenty of names out there. There's at least 25, 30, 40 people that can really really make differences on some teams. So uh, we'll get into now. I we'll promise this is the last thing we're doing today. <laughs> um, we're just gonna do a way too early standings. We're not doing records, any of that. Uh, it's a little, little bit hard to just sure, that, judge any of that schedule. easier no we don't know the schedule order we know the opponents but even not even go too in depth with that yeah, yeah, yeah. just uh so we'll run through this super quick we'll try to make so this let's do uh, the AFC east first sure. you go and i go uh yeah. i've got buffalo miami new england and the jets Same. okay yeah. uh, i feel like that's pretty that one was pretty straightforward a lot of those i think there's like there's three or four divisions you're like yeah Go one way or the other, and then there's the the other ones are pretty pretty four straightforward. This one is that's one of them. Outstanding one, two is there, and then three and four is just yeah. yeah. And, and I think I think there's even a gap between the Jets and the Pats. So like there's yeah. really a clear one, two, three, four. Yeah. Uh, what is West? West. Uh, yeah, it's a tough one. Uh, I'm gonna give the Chargers the edge because I did I did believe uh, like I said that they were the number one team. I'll uh, I'll buy the hype for now and, and take my lumps later. When they uh, when they're seven and ten or something and horrible, but uh, yeah no I I like them I, I like that uh, like I said they don't have an easy schedule by any means I think uh, they got to stay healthy um, they certainly got to take advantage and beat Kansas City when they play them not close yeah not overtime not any of that but every like they the past four games they played they've either beat Kansas City or lost in overtime so they've given them fits the past four times yeah, they played them and now that like I said I think they got better I think Kansas City got slightly worse. 2022, I'll give them a slight edge. Kansas City, number two. 
I still think they're ahead of Denver and uh, Raiders. Uh, Denver three. I think they're a bit better than Vegas. I still think Vegas is going to be good. I still th- I can still see them being nine and eight, ten and seven, and and miss missing the playoffs with with, with a record like that. Yeah. I certainly think all four teams will have winning records. Like I said, we're not going to get too much into the numbers, but I think yeah, Chargers, Kansas City, Denver, and Raiders for me. Okay, I got uh, Denver, Chargers, Chiefs, Raiders. Okay. I think Chiefs take a little step back. Chargers take a step up. Denver is blowing away the better team in the division. Okay. With the defense they got and the offensive weapons, I, th- I think they're going to be a a fifty fifty split, which Russell Wilson hasn't really had because. Pete Carroll, he's always we gotta run first. The old style, you know? Yeah. Army football. It's like pen and dang throats, but he's gonna be in a passing offense now, which I think is gonna fare well for them. So the AFC North, what do you got? Um let, I think it's Cincinnati, Baltimore, definitely fighting for the top spot. Uh I'll go Cincinnati, looks like just Baltimore's lack lack of anything that they're doing. Uh so Cincinnati, Baltimore, uh Cleveland, and then Pittsburgh. I got the same. Uh, I think this is another straightforward one. I mean, you, you might even make an argument for Pittsburgh being the three, if anything, with Cleveland, like like with their quarterback yes. fiasco. So, uh, but right the now, suspension is the thing for me. Yeah. If Deshaun Watson was healthy, I'd yeah. put them one or two. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Do. I'd definitely put him above Baltimore if he was playing yes. all, all games, like yeah. the way he's playing. So the AFC South. Uh, I'm going to give the Colts the edge. Um, I'm going to have them winning it. Uh, then I'll have Tennessee. Uh, I'll have Jacksonville third. Like I said, probably five six wins. Uh, and then Houston is going to be top five pick in 2023. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Yeah, so that was another pretty straightforward one. It was really just who won that one. Yeah. So my seven playoff teams for AFC, I got Buffalo, Denver, the Chargers, the Chiefs, Cincinnati, Indianapolis, and Tennessee. Yeah, so we'll go with the division winners first, and then because I haven't really had a look too much at Walker. So Buffalo, Cincinnati, uh, Indianapolis and the Chargers. Kansas City is definitely going to be there. Um, I'm going to give Baltimore uh, benefit of the doubt that they're going to pull through and stay a bit healthy and maybe have a good draft and still sign some people. Yeah. Uh, and then the last one's tough. The last one's really tough. Um, I'll give it to Denver, but it's really a coin flip between them and Miami for me. Yeah, you got they, Tennessee missing by the Tennessee side. missing, yeah. I really I, I think they had departures. I don't think... Um, uh, Tannehill is going to get any better. Like the weapons aren't there for him. Uh, Henry's getting older. I mean, like he's been getting, it, more year. more injuries as they come. Yeah, I, I'm not a sold on them this year. Okay. Um, let's go to NFC East standings. Um, I'm going to give Dallas the edge. I do think Dallas has that experience still. Again, it's tough. Like I really do. Like I said, if Philly makes him a couple extra moves. Uh, they got three first round picks, remember, so their team is going to get better. Uh, by the time the draft is done, I may have this flip, depending on how the draft goes. Um, but right now, Dallas, Philadelphia, Washington, I think the Giants are going to be a top five pick, too. I think they are a disaster coming up this year. Um, I got Dallas, Washington, Philly, New York. Oh, wow. Okay. Just because last year, Washington had four games decided by one point. Mm-hmm. And Carson Wentz is a better quarterback than. Taylor Homicade. And I think their defense underperformed last year. I think their yeah. defense is better than what they showed last yeah. year. And Chase Young's back healthy. It's it's only positives for them. Yeah. They haven't had a busy offseason, but you know, yeah. they should get better. Uh, the NFC West. Um, again, this is probably the tougher one to pick. Again, uh, I, I think the, I think the Rams are definitely the cream of the crop. Uh, San Francisco and then Arizona and Seattle. Again, Seattle at the bottom. Arizona, like I said, hasn't done much to improve. Haven't sold me on anything. They've only lost. San Francisco, if nothing else, will give the Rams fits because they always have. Uh, and then the Rams, just on paper, are just talented. Yeah, I got, I got the same standings. Rams, 49ers, Cardinals, Seahawks. Uh, NFC North. Uh, Green Bay is still the cream to crop there. I think um, they definitely took a step back. I think there's there's room for those other teams to step up, and I don't think they really did enough to really close that gap. I think the gap closed just from Green Bay getting worse, not necessarily the other teams getting better. So can you depend on those? Because like Green Bay is still going to win 11, 12 games just because Rodgers is great. Like Can those other teams, they've got to rise above 10 wins, and none of them really do. So i got Green Bay. Uh, Minnesota still seems like a clear second. Chicago disappointed me so far in the offseason. They're three. And Detroit is what they are. i got Minnesota actually winning the division. Uh, then Green Bay is number two. 
Chicago and Detroit. Uh, we said we weren't going to go too much into it, but I'd like to hear your reasoning as to why you have Minnesota ahead. I just, I just think Green Bay took that much of a step back that they can't make up for it. Mm-hmm. They lost their entire time. And I love Minnesota's over. offense, and Green Bay has to score with them now. Yes. And same thing. And Minnesota has beaten Minnesota Green has Bay. played them well. Yes, the last they have. three seasons, I think they're five and one against them, or four yeah. and two. Yeah. So I can see them potentially getting both games. Yeah. And they're they're going to beat Chicago. Yeah. And they're going to beat Detroit. Yeah. Hopefully. And if they do, that's that's five and that's one. that's six or five or six wins right there. Yeah. You know. So and they didn't place that well last year. Obviously, they were second. So hopefully, their schedule is a little easier. Yeah. But uh, for me, just on the offensive side of the ball, and Ed uh, Desari, what's his name? What's that? Smith. Uh, is Zadarius. Yeah. <laughs> Desarius. Zadarius, whatever. Yeah. Whichever works. Zadarius Smith, yeah. Adding him, I think he's good. Yeah, he's a good piece for that. And the thing about Minnesota, they were missing their uh, premier pass rusher last year, Hunter. I don't know his first name. Daniel, I think. Yeah. So Or Daniel. He, uh, Daniel. No, I think, I, think it's, I, think it, I think it actually is, yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So, over the last four seasons... He's one of the best pass rushers in the league, and he was there for 10 games last year. Yeah. So they're getting him back fully healthy. Ed and Smith, I, I feel like they, they can win this division. Um, NFC South. I feel like we're same for this one as well. Uh, <laughs> I think Tampa, I think New Orleans always plays them tough. Uh, I think they'll win a couple games. So I got the Bucks, the Saints, uh, Carolina, and then Atlanta. Uh, I was back four on Atlanta, but I just think Atlanta took such a step back. I think Carolina does have talent. They have a good defense. Yeah, they uh, So, yeah, Tampa, New Orleans, uh, Carolina, Atlanta for me, and that wraps up where we are right now. Yeah, I get the same. So what's your, what's your playoff teams? Um, like I said, in terms of division winners, I have Dallas, Green Bay, Tampa, uh, the Rams. I definitely think you're getting a team from the West, so I'll take the 49ers. Um, I think I'm going to take Minnesota. Uh, I think they'll have enough to get in there, but I think it's going to be like this year. I think it'll be the top five, and then I think six and seven are going to be like, eh, they're kind of just there. So I think Minnesota will take the six as of right now, and I'll give, uh, like I said, another coin flip. I'll, I'll, I'll give New Orleans a show for uh, seed seven, but uh, I Philly, Philly's on my mind too. Yeah, I got Dallas, the Rams, the Vikings, the Bucks as the division winners, and uh, for the wild card spots, three wild card spots, I got Green Bay taking the fifth seed, San Francisco is six, mm-hmm. and the Saints as number seven. And you know, I'm I'm looking, you know, it's it's uh, coy of me to overlook Arizona a little bit too. They're definitely in that mix. I, I should have mentioned yeah. them with the wild card. They're definitely. I just feel like they took such. I a just deal. I just hate taking three teams from one division to make the playoffs. I, I usually don't like doing that. Um, in the AFC West, there could be potentially four teams. It could be four. I mean, that's that's crazy to think of, but it's certainly yeah. a possibility. So that'll uh, that'll wrap up the podcast for this week. We went an hour over our previous record for time here. August, yeah, so we, we apologize. Now, listen, if if there's something, um, you know, maybe we can break this up into two parts eventually or or maybe, you know, it's a kind of a learning curve for us to break it up and do two parts or something like that maybe next time. But uh, we discussed our next time around we are going to do a preview for the draft. So instead of bombarding you again with another two-hour one, uh, we might come back and do an offensive preview, a defensive preview uh, separately. Uh, just so kind of give us a chance to look over everything that's coming up to for the draft and uh, get some good names and that way we're not just talking about the first round only because I think we would be if we did it all at once so uh, we'll probably do an offensive preview and a defensive preview separately before the draft I believe the draft is the end of April uh, so we got a whole month yeah. to really dive into everything uh, like I said we might have some more news with the free agency still going um, yeah, and then we're, we're we're really into the off season at that point, and some uh, some slower times. So we're coming up with some ideas. We had a whole Tom Brady tribute episode planned, and he came That's back. So one. so we'll uh, we'll talk. We might still do it just for the you know sake of doing it, film time. But uh, yeah, no, it should be a fun episode if we get to it. And you know, we might have a like I said a guest or two on to talk about the draft or something, or talk about probably during that off season episode maybe or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, for now that's it. Uh, we'll be back, like I said, with a draft preview coming up next. I guess probably in the next two weeks, three weeks or so. Yeah. Give everybody a preview for that. But uh, that's it for now. Other than that, like and share the podcast. Yeah. And uh, that's it for us here on the NFL Podcast. 
Roundup Podcast, shit. <laughs> NFL Roundup Podcast. We'll, <laughs> we'll get the name right. It's only nine episodes yet. <laughs> right on. All right, we'll catch you next time. Yeah. Peace out.